everybody, welcome. Um, I am going to call the meeting to order. This is your annual reorganization meeting. And so until we've elected some officers, um, I will run this meeting till we have a new chair. So first, um, I want to just say thanks to all. I know that it was frantic to get, make sure you'd all taken your um, oath and gotten sworn in in a short period of time. And everybody did that. So thank you so much to our newly elected or reelected board members. That's awesome. Um, and our first order of business is uh, item two, board reorganization. 2.1 should be better named election of officers. So we'll move to 2.1, election of officers. And I am seeking a nomination for our board chairperson. Jen, I nominate Floor Diaz-Smith. Thank you, Jonas. Is there a second? Okay. Ursula, thank you. Are there other nominations? Floor has been nominated as board chairperson. Other nominations? Okay, I'm gonna say that's sufficient wait time. Any discussion? I'll say that's enough wait time too. All those um, in favor of Floor D.S. Smith being elected board chairperson for this year, 2022-23 board year, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And abstentions. Great, Floor, you're <laughs> our newly elected chairperson. Thank you and congrats. And I'll turn the meeting over to you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for the vote of confidence. And I am, um, it's, uh, oh, Jonas. Go Sorry, ahead. I don't mean to interrupt your vote of no, confidence. Go ahead. No, um, go ahead. So I noticed that the time on the packet says 530, but the calendar invite says six. We only have eight board members here, so we have a quorum, but we are missing a number of people who I think may show up at six. Thank you, Jonas. It, yeah, that's that's true. The calendar had had us at, at, at six o'clock. I, I did try to make contact with most uh, people. Carrie uh, said he is driving back from Maine and said that he is going to try to be back uh, on time, but that he would uh, accept a nomination if there was a nomination for him. Uh, and then Natasha is not able to join us today because she has uh, negotiations and which previously he, she had scheduled before knowing she's going to try to join us at eight o'clock if she can or, or, or sooner. Uh, and um, I'm trying and Vera can't join us until six o'clock. She did know about about 530, but she's unable. She might not even be able to join us until 630. And Jonathan, I saw him here. He's, oh yeah, there he is. Yeah. So Floor, how many is that? How many are we missing then that are unaccounted for? So that, we're missing that, four. Accounted three. Sounds yeah, like we're, we miss, have, we're missing three and is that we're missing four people because there's not a member from East Montpelier. Uh, we, we would need to advertise and, uh, and then probably appoint, but there's uh, nobody ran or was a write-in for Stephen okay. Luke. Yeah. Okay. So who am I missing? Jonas, can you help me? Uh, I see everybody else. So we're missing Kari and um, Natasha and there's the uh, and Vera. MP, Vera. Vera. Lindy. Yeah. Aside from those, because they're, they're accounted Lindy. for. Lindy, Lindy, Lindy. Lindy is here. Lindy. Lindy, Lindy is here. She was, Lindy's here. Okay. She should be in right now. I, I don't see her. Unless she's VT. He, he's, he's right Lindy there. is. I just. Th I think Lindy's the VT instructor. I think yeah. that is. I can't get my name changed until I'm here. I'm signed oh. in on the wrong account. Oh, okay. Sorry about that, Lindy. I texted. Yeah. Oh, you did. Oh, I see it. Sorry, I was not. I didn't have it right next to me, but I do now. Yeah, got it. Thank you, Florin. Thank you for doing all that outreach. You're welcome. Okay, and so so we can we can, we can get started again. As I was saying, thank you for uh, the honor of being your board chair again. I, I hope to serve you well through the next year, uh, and I'm excited about the future of all of us together. And now I would take nominations for vice chair. Like I said, uh, Kari is not able to join us, but he did say that if 
they, you guys want to nominate him, he would accept the nomination. I would nominate Kari Bradley as a vice chair. Uh, could I have a second? Second. Second. Okay. Second. Any discussion? All of those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, the motion carries. If now we need to nominate our clerk. Could I have a nomination for the clerk for board, please? I'll nominate okay. someone. And I'll second Lindy's nomination. <laughs> All right. Nominated by Lindy, second by Chris. In uh, Jonas, I assume you accept the nomination? I do. Thank you. All those in favor of Jonas, uh, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, thank you, Jonas. Thank you, guys. So what, what we were gonna do, uh, there's, a, there's a long list for us to do that we were hoping that we would do under board operations. And I was gonna move us in into executive session to do a board trade for a student matter. We just have a quick, uh, because we have new board members, we are gonna have a quick, uh, I send you all an email, just a quick overview with, with Jen on, on student matters and then we'll move uh, and then we'll talk about the student matter tonight. So if I could have a motion to go into executive session for a student matter. So moved. Second, so seconded. Wait, wait, sorry. Uh, who, uh, Jonathan, you moved it and Chris yeah. seconded it or Daniel? Yes. Okay. I think I moved it. Dennis, Dennis. Okay, sorry, Dennis. That's okay. Dennis and then and we'll do all the welcomes once we are past this part, okay? Dennis and Chris second. All of those in favor, please say aye. 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 Give me a pause. Hearing none, uh, Mark, could you move us into executive session and you have all the names? Thank you. Okay, so we are back. I'm gonna wait for everybody to be back in. Yeah, I see most everybody. Some of them are taking a little longer. Okay. All right, so now that we've finished with our little uh, board development training, thank you everybody for coming in. Could I have a motion to go in and Executive session for a student matter and invite Jen Jessica Wells and Jen, our superintendent, to come in with us, please. Floor, I move to uh, go back into executive session this time to include Stephen Dellinger, Paint, Jen Miller, Arsenault, and Jessica Wells. Thank you. Second. Can I have a second? A second by Ursula. Thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, let's move into executive session. And sorry for the work, Mark. Uh, sorry. I have a motion. <laughs> uh, I move to accept the administration's recommendation uh, in a student matter. Thank you, Jonas. Second. Okay. Moved by Jonas, second by Chris. All those in favor, please say aye. Right. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries unanimously. Okay. So we're done with that part. I'm going to move back to our agenda. We're going to have our community forum. Usually our first Wednesday is the community forum, but I wanted to take a minute to have the new board members introduce themselves and then uh, move into the community into the community forum. So I'm wondering if we could have the new board members introduce themselves. And then when we're in board operations, we will have the whole board introduce themselves. So welcome, Dennis. Welcome, Daniel. Hi. Welcome, 
Thank you very much. I don't know what you're looking for in way of just your town, can... your 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 town, sure. and yeah, your your in, anything you want to share with us, brief. Sure. I'm a returning uh, Central Vermonter. I lived here many years ago. I um, know some people here on the screen from my time in the past, and came back to Middlesex about three years ago uh, to be closer to family. And so, very excited about being here. I have a um, background in education, and I'm really excited about just being a supportive member of this community and being as helpful as I can to both the students and um, uh, teachers and administrators, but the community as well and helping bridge that gap. So I'm really excited and I'm very thankful to be here. So thank you for having me. Thank you, Dennis. Daniel? Hi everyone, I'm Daniel Keeney, um, representing Callis uh, for the remaining one year anyway uh, of, of a pre-existing term. Um, I do not have a background in education, but definitely share Dennis's gratitude to be part of this community. Um, I, I do have a spouse working at U32, Adrian Wade Keeney in the art department, um, and have a little prior experience in, um, in administration of, of a school, I, in the sense that I was on a, an independent school board in um, the Northeast Kingdom in Lindenville. So. Uh, have a little bit of somewhat relatable experience to draw on, but looking forward to learning a lot. And I hope my uh, mistakes aren't too egregious or disruptive in the meantime. Thank you. Thank you, both of you. Yeah. So now we're gonna move into the community forum and then we'll continue to do our board operations. But uh, Mark, I'm wondering if you wouldn't mind uh, sharing our slides and just the first one and then we'll, we'll get started. Okay, so the, the purpose of our community engagement today is to share with you some uh, of our student, oops, Mark, just leave it right there, it's okay. It, it, student learning outcomes, I'm gonna hand this over to to carry in a little bit. I just wanted to say that it, it, we have been having the practice of, of starting our meetings, our, meeting, our first meeting of the month with the community engagement. And today we are looking at artistic expression. I wanna remind everybody that there are no wrong questions, that we should be kind to each other, that there was a lot of information in the packet. If you had a chance to look at the packet, if not, please enjoy this small, a presentation, but we are all here to to learn uh, together and to share with the community uh, what we're doing. Uh, as you can see, this is our this is why we exist to nature to nurture and inspire in all our students the passion and creativity and the power to contribute to their local and global communities. And with that, I'm going to pass it to Kari so that she he can tell us more about the Quality Committee who has been involved in this. We've been partnership partnering with them for our community engagement. So next slide and Kari. Thanks, Floor. Hi, everybody. Kari Bradley from Callis here. And um, Floor shared the mission statement. This, um, it's, it's supplemented by um, what you see on the slide here, which is we have defined the student learning outcomes, the things that we want our students to um, be proficient in by the time they graduate from U32. And you can see that it's divided into two categories core knowledge and transferable skills and behaviors. And since this is our mission, it's the purpose of our district, um, we wanna make sure as a board that we um, um, give this uh, appropriate focus and support it with all the resources that, uh, that we can. And so as part of that, the board uh, created the Ed Quality Committee and we have been supporting for the past couple of years, a board goal to review each one of these student learning outcomes that you see on this slide. And um, we look at them from multiple aspects, curriculum, instruction, performance. We, we wanna understand them better, both to educate ourselves, but also to know how, how are we doing and how can we support success. And um, so for the past year and a half, or even a little more than that, we've been working our way through these learning outcomes and after a bit of a break, uh, we're, we're back and, and, and focusing on the last two. And tonight is artistic expression. 
uh, and maybe go to the next slide, please. And okay, so this is just this is basically what what I just said, um, with the additional point that um, we generally are looking at multiple sources of data, and um, because education is so complex, it's really helpful to look in different um, ways. Um, so. Um, I'm sure we'll touch on this a bit tonight when we get into the performance data. Um, and then the last uh, uh, point is that we will be doing the final student learning outcome global citizenship at some point later uh, this spring. Um, next slide, please. And um, we are about to receive a presentation from Jen and others, and then we're going to have a conversation about what we've heard. And we, um, we have a, a, a protocol that we use. Um, these four prompts here, what did you see, questions do you have, and so on. We're, we're going to respond to each of those uh, to, in order to have this conversation. So uh, take a look at these and be thinking about these as we move through so you can have some responses in mind for later. And I think that is the introduction. And I will turn it over to Jen. Thank you, Kari. Next slide, please, Mark. So we have been following sort of a standard protocol through um, these ed quality uh, reviews of the student learning outcomes. And the first thing that I wanna make sure that everybody knows is that we've articulated uh, what our students need to know and be able, need to know and be able to do um, across the board from pre-kindergarten through graduation. So this is a link to the standards and performance indicators for artistic expression. Um, the four standards for artistic expression I've uh, highlighted there for you. Another important point to make is that uh, we have aligned all of our standards and performance indicators to national standards adopted by the state of Vermont. So I also have a link to the national core art standards. And then finally, I did that little um, screenshot there to show you that um, we've differentiated an artistic expression to articulate what our kids need to know and be able to do um, in dance, music, theater, and visual arts. And you're going to see some examples or at least links to some of those things um, throughout this presentation. Um, the other point I'd make before asking you to advance, Mark, is that um, in almost all cases, not every case, but almost all, our standards stay the same from pre-kindergarten all the way to graduation. And what changes is our performance indicators. They are articulated in grade level uh, PIs, performance indicators, PIs, or grade level clusters. Next slide. Mark, can you advance to the next slide? All right, I um I don't know if I can share over Mark right now. Come on. I got it, Jen. Okay, thanks. Um, I'm gonna keep going and then because the, the richest part is coming up here after I do one other quick piece. And that is um, when you when we do advance to that next slide, you're gonna see just a link to the national core art standards themselves. And um, I wanted to show them to you because you're gonna see a lot of similarity between the way that we've articulated our standards and PIs. And there we go, thank you. And the um, the way and the ways that they're articulated at the national level. So again, I have the live link there for anybody who is interested in, um, in exploring them in more depth. Next slide. So I have been putting together these presentations for the Ed Quality Committee for all of our student learning outcomes. And I have to say, this was a really, really fun one to put together. So for a huge thanks to everybody who sent me examples of student work, but this is really an opportunity. It's like a virtual art gallery. So we're just gonna mostly look a um, couple of things. Hopefully you're gonna see uh, different mediums of art um, and an advancement of sort of progressively more advanced or sophisticated skills. I tried to organize this in a way where it's our youngest students and then some intermediate students and then our middle and high school students. Um, and so 
I would say just um, take a minute and soak it in. I, um, it brings me tremendous joy to see students' artwork and to listen to them perform. And um, so there you go. Here's the first one. Mark, next slide, please. I can see some of you and I see that you're smiling. Next slide. So again, I hope that you're seeing some of this, you know, similar strategies are gonna get more and more sophisticated as our, um, as our students develop their knowledge and skills um, of the, in the visual arts. Next slide, please. Next slide. Um, this one I wanted to show to you too, that the color wheel over there is a communal piece of art. So most of what I've showcased thus far, if not all of it, has been um, artworks that have been made by individual students. And this also represents um, some of the projects that um, our teachers might have our students engage in as a grade or a grade level cluster. Next slide. Um, this next series I love because uh, it shows you sort of side by side some work in progress. So you can see that, um, that there was some drawing and some carving and then some printing. Next slide. Yeah. So there's another example, same project, um, but in a taken in a different direction. Next slide. The other thing that I want to highlight, not only for our um, visual arts teachers, but for our art teachers um, across the board, music, theater, and dance, um, they were particularly hard hit during the pandemic, during a time of remote instruction, and, um, and during all the restrictions, for example, teaching music when one is not supposed to be singing, um, those sorts of things. And those teachers um, were incredibly uh, inspiring and creative as they were um, working out ways to engage students in the work. So this is just an example of a project um, for the spring of uh, 2020 when everybody was learning at home, when it was remote and just recreating um, either famous works of art or hand drawing or painting them. So just a little bit side by side Again, um, I would encourage you and the public at large when you have some time um, or you want a little jolt of um, inspiration to click that link and see the entire thing. Next slide. And then I just wanted to show a few pictures of this. Um, it's a tradition at U32 to have an arts bash night. And if you've ever had the pleasure of attending, um, the halls are filled with amazing student artwork and the um, rooms are alive with music. It's a really vibrant and festive occasion. And, um, and we've had to do it differently uh, for the past two years. So these are examples that were put up uh, earlier this winter at U32. Next slide. All right, we're gonna shift gears to music. Next slide, please. And the next couple of slides are just some examples of what's been happening in music class, uh, most recently this year when our students are wearing their masks. So you can see how they're organized and um, some of the instrumental work that they're doing. Next slide. There you go. Um, and next slide. One thing that I'd say has also been a um, really a uh, silver lining during the pandemic is that we've been broadcasting so many events, including having some of our concerts either, uh, you know, recorded or, or performed via Zoom. So I just wanted to give you some examples of the middle school and high school music program, um, really vibrant and creative. So again, there are some links here that um, can take you to the programs themselves, the, um, the recordings of those concerts that we had most recently. And I just wanted to give you some examples. So next slide. Again, here's uh, some of what's happening uh, during band, uh, in the band concert. Next slide. And another example there. Next slide. 
here's our orchestra. And the final slide. Yep, that's uh, there's some chorus for you. So again, um, it's been uh, it's been a challenge, and our teachers have risen to the occasion, and our students are still deeply engaged. They've risen to the occasion too. And the next slide, please. Uh, this one has a lot of links to performances. So um, the theater has been able to, they did some virtual presentations and then they were together on the stage masked earlier this fall. Again, if you have not yet had an opportunity to enjoy some of our theater productions or dance performances, I would invite you to um, treat yourselves sometime when you have a few minutes to carve out. And um, those links will take you to the you to the YouTube channel or to the performances themselves. Next slide. So as we mentioned earlier, when possible, we try to triangulate data. So for example, if we're looking at how our students might be doing in math or literacy, we'll look at the statewide data, um, such as the Smarter Balanced Assessment and local uh, common data assessments like uh, iReady Math or um, the Benchmark Assessment System and Literacy. And then we'll look at classroom assessments as well. I'm really trying to get a complete picture of our students' performance. In, um, the, in the arts and artistic expression, we have fewer sources of data to analyze. There's not a statewide assessment in any of these areas. Um, and we don't really have uh, across the board some local assessments. We, we were working in that direction of creating a common um, music assessment, for example, and the pandemic has hit and that, that work has been a little bit on the back burner. Um, so the data that I have to share with you um, comes from our report cards and our transcripts. Um, and at the same time, um, it's true that our students, um, the performance is the assessment in many ways. And so there's a really public showcase of our students' performance as well. Next slide. So uh, we tried to collect for you just a snapshot of some of the data. Some of this, again, uh, hit by the pandemic and what was or was not happening and um, and or the course of the curriculum and rolling out over the course of the year. So you can see in uh, January of 2021, some more standards were addressed more than others. Um, that's pretty natural. If you were to look at a report card across the board um, in January, sometimes there's uh, not assessed yet or um, is still collecting some data along the way. So nothing there that is um, particularly alarming or of concern, just a snapshot of um, some of our art data in January, 2021. And then next slide, please. You have it again. Um, this was from the most recent collection of report card data. So there's art 2022 elementary. Next slide. We wanted to show you the music data. So at the elementaries, we pull out and report separately on art and on music. So again, the standards are the same. And the performance indicators are different. And next slide, there's the same data for this current year. Next slide, some report card data to show you. Um, and we included grade nine just because uh, the way that we've been reporting out on the transcript data doesn't include grade nine in progress. It's always it's just the end of grade nine. So um, again, depending on what students are taking and when in the year we're getting the data, different standards are addressed at different times. But that's a snapshot of that data, and that was last year. Um, which was a particularly, you know, a challenging year for us overall. Next slide. Here's similar data for this year. Next slide. Um, and again, just for those of you um, who are looking at some of this data for the first time, it's important to know that we have articulated um, as required uh, proficiency-based graduation requirements for our students. And for us in Washington Central, we say that a student is proficient um, and ready to graduate from U32 when they've achieved proficiency in all of our standards. So that means in artistic expression, students need to demonstrate proficiency in developing craft, 
performing, presenting, and producing, connecting, and responding. There are multiple pathways that a student might may choose in order to achieve proficiency um, in those standards, and primarily that is through art or, um, or through music uh, or through theater, and there's some dance as well. So this data is at the end of the ninth grade year where our students are relative to where we expect them to be in order to graduate and earn a U32 diploma. So the next slide. You can see students are getting closer to becoming proficient. Uh, there are fewer that are, are demonstrating no evidence or beginning evidence, and they're, we're just sort of moving over toward developing and proficient a little bit more. And then next slide. Um, this is the uh, assessment for our current grade 12 at the end of their 11th grade year. So 88% um, of our students by the end of 11th grade have achieved proficiency or they're advanced in the first two standards um, and 68% or 65% at the, end percent at the end of their 11th grade year are proficient in connecting and responding. That means that um, this informs the course uh, choices that students make when they're scheduling for their senior year. So they can select courses that will help them to um, achieve proficiency in all of these standards. Um, I was gonna say one other thing about that. Oh, the thing I was gonna say in general is that, um, you know, before the pandemic hit, I think we articulated our performance-based uh, graduation requirements and we had a really good first version and we were poised to make, do an even better second version and we've been a little derailed. Um, and so we'll, we will get back on track here and continue to think about what are the um, changes in the ways that we operate that we might need to support our students. Currently right now, um, by and large, not exclusively, but by and large, um, if a student takes two courses in a sequence of art or in music um, and they meet those course expectations, they will achieve proficiency at the graduation level. That's sort of the impact on their schedule. Next slide. We always talk about um, the school board's role when we meet as, as an education quality committee. Um, and so just again, some continued support for professional learning. I mean, our teachers in general, we always make that commitment and that's part of um, what you all do when, when you support a budget that we are um, building. And so continued support for that. Um, come when you can, when your schedules allow you and attend some of our events. Um, and then the other one is a consideration regarding instructional time. We talked about this a little bit board at the um, budget conversation that not only is money a resource, but time is a resource. And so we have so many things that we want our students to do and we have a finite amount of time in which to do it. So we're gonna continue to engage in those conversations Again, reflecting our community's values, um, trying to figure out how to how to allocate that precious resource of time. Next slide. And this is where um, I would invite you, Kari, if you'd like to take back over in terms of facilitating and seeing um, what observations folks made and uh, where you want to go from there. Great. Yeah, why don't we open it up um, and we'll just go work our way through these questions. Um, maybe we should stop the slideshow so we can see each other. And um, first question is, what did you see? And I see Dennis's hands up. Dennis, please. Well, I saw some really fantastic artwork and I, you know, this is really uh, interesting as a new member of the board. I've always heard legend of the great artistic programs and opportunities for students and um, the schools that um, are here. And I just wanted to say how incredible they were and beautiful. And certainly we have some quality instructors and students that are rising up. Um, so that was certainly something I saw. Thanks, Dennis. Anybody else have any, an observation? Dennis. Yeah, I'll second what Dennis said about the great art. Uh, in the charts and in the data, there was uh, a number of um, 
a number of slides where there was where there was no evidence right for each of those categories uh, i think uh, just to be clear a lot of that is because of covid because of the reduced opportunities that we've had um so i just love to hear about how we're going to you know move those no evidence bars as far over to the right as we can okay any other what did you seize So we'll move on to the next question, which is, oh, Jonathan, please, and Chris. Yeah, I just, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm biased. My, my daughter went to Berlin Elementary, had a wonderful art teacher, went through the U32 arts program, and now is making her living in New York City as an artist. Um, so, I mean, I could talk a lot about the beauty of the arts in our district and it needs to continue it's, it's really for me it's a foundational thing not just personally but it's it helps in becoming a, a well-rounded human being thank you thank you jonathan chris you're up um i was struck by the um wide range of variety of um opportunities you know from theater uh to drawing uh, to music um, and it just provides a lot of opportunity for many students to engage in many different disciplines or concentrate in a discipline. Uh, and, you know, I applaud the staff for really encouraging student participation uh, and involvement. And, um, you know, our theater program program is a jewel in the uh, in central Vermont. And it's just, you know, it's, it's amazing to see um, how students are talented and self-possessed and engaged in performing and, you know, generates our applause and amazement at the same time. Thanks. Thank you. Ursula. I enjoyed seeing all the artwork. I won't lie. I really do love seeing student artwork. Um, one of the things that I was going to mention in the data that I noticed is, especially the high school one, when we talk about the graduation requirements and what the data showed, is the, even with COVID and even with the hiccups of our kids in music, our kids in theater had to wear masks, couldn't perform in some cases, especially last year. You look at the number of kids who right now are 12th graders and that data was from last year that have made their proficiency. And I think that that's really great considering a lot of the hiccups and things that we had to work around. Thank you, Ursula. Okay, last call, any other observations? So we'll move on to the next question, which is what questions did this raise for you? We got one. Floor, please. Thank you, it was a great presentation. Thank you, I really enjoyed it. I think I wanna pair this question with the question about time and what else that was that, that was asked. And, and to me is that cross-curricular connections, you know, how do we integrate math or literacy into art? So how do we move the needle into that just to try to bridge the time concern too, right? So how do, you know, how do we measure that or how do we create curriculum that could be cross across the curricular or create connections? I know that we do, but how do we measure that? That's the question I had, thank you. Yeah, that's really good. I, I had a similar question about synergies and how, how you know, artistic expression informs other things. Uh, Maggie, please. Um, two things, first, just a, a question, knowing um, that like digital music is um, a newer offering at 32, I have a student who's um, finding that really satisfying as um, a, a musical addition. And so the question being at the middle and high school level, does the department feel like they have adequate support to continue to innovate as technology and um, music is changing, um, music in particular, but I think art in general. Um, and the second goes to the question of access and equity um, as kids are approaching U32, um, as that's been kind of an ongoing theme this year uh, with the concern for staffing and the question of, you know, is it should we be looking at um, 
shifting teachers to schools that don't have access for a period of time um, rather than waiting for those positions to be filled. Right, really good questions. I, I should have mentioned that we're not necessarily gonna answer these questions tonight. Some of them are, are not really easily answerable. Some of them maybe are, and I see Jen's taking notes and perhaps if it's reasonable, she'll have some responses in the next packet or something like that. But anyway, Diane, you're up. What questions do you have? So it, it connects back to what Jen was saying about how, um, <clears throat> where, where the work had been going prior to COVID in terms of really identifying some of that um, curriculum and standards and um, really the measurements of that. And so how do we get back there once, you know, how do we begin to capture some of that work again and that returning to normal again so that we can uh, collect that data? Great, thanks, Diane. Michaela, you're up. Um, so I think I have, I have two kind of unrelated questions. One being, um, it was really interesting to see those graphs and with numbers from the report cards, um, having only experienced report cards as a parent. Um, I'm curious, um, in some discussions I've had with, with various people, um, consistency in terms of making those ass assessments. I'm, I'm curious how much um, training goes in to, um, you know, to with the teachers as to how to make that consistent across grades and across schools. Um, Cause I, I see that, you know, it, it's definitely important to be able to measure these things. Um, so that was one question I had. I don't know if that was clear. The other question um, in relation to how board members can be more supportive, I would, um, I'll admit I, I'm not great about seeking out specific opportunities. So um, if there was a way to keep us better posted, we get all the elementary school like digests, but I don't, we don't get the U30 or I don't at least get the U32 newsletter. I think it would be great um, to be more aware of what's going on at the school and important dates and that sort of thing. Thank you. Well, I'm, I'm confident in answering that we can get you on the newsletter list. Uh, that, that, that's a yes. Um, and Dennis, you have a question? Well, I do. I just wanted to um, respond to a couple of things. One that Jen originally talked about was sort of getting back to the curricular piece and connection and being able to quantitatively identify student growth and progress in the arts. And I just want to, I don't, I don't know who said this or where it came from, but I think that um, I read somewhere a long time ago about when someone walks into a kindergarten classroom and asks how many kids are artists, they all raise their hand. And by the time you get to 10th grade and you ask how many are artists, you get two or three that are kind of like I am. And I think that one of the things I'm just curious about, and I'm just throwing out there, um, you know, some to talk about maybe later, but is around assessing engagement in the arts, as well as sort of uh, demonstrating skill. And I think that art is something that is, I'm not sure who said it maybe, um, earlier, but, you know, art is a foundation of um, a great society. And, and I think that the more kids are participating in it, regardless of their ability to be necessarily proficient, um, is meaningful. And I just wonder if engagement could be one of those tools that would be quantifiable and um, would really demonstrate that a student is interested in participating to become an artist on whatever level that might look like. So just my thoughts. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Daniel. Um, yeah, just piggybacking on what Dennis said, I, I agree with that. I'm, I'm impressed by sort of the ability and sort of the articulation of these objective measures and also at the same time really discouraged by what they don't capture and just wondering about engagement and yeah, the opportunity for students who have, who struggle to express themselves in other disciplines being able to express themselves in sort of an artistic medium and just all the other ways that we're not able to capture in quantifiable and measurable ways, the impact of art education. Um, so what is that all that negative space to put it as an artist would around these quantifiable pieces? Thanks. Any last questions? So let's move on to what struck you as significant.
Okay, I'll go. Um, you know, I th sorry, Diane, you actually put your hand up where I, I just. So I, I think it's significant that there is a commitment to art and creativity. We're trying to quantify it. Daniel, I, I totally hear you about that. Um, you know, it strikes me that we have a school board of directors that's very interested in the arts and that over the last couple of years has tried to stand up for the arts and heard the community focus on the arts. Um, um, I think all of our elementary schools have ukuleles now. Um, for some of the newer board members, one of the last things we did right before COVID hit uh, was talk about expanding the, the elementary string program. There was a good proposal in front of us. Um, you know, the, the, the agenda has been packed for the last two years. Um, um, but I'd love, you know, I, I'd love to see more of it. What strikes me is that, yeah, what, what Dan said, you know, I, I grew up around here U32 was known as the, the, the artsy high school. It's nice to see that continuing. Thanks Jonas. So you got Daniel and then Diane. Daniel, that was an old hand. Diane, you're up. Yeah, that's what was significant to me was the emphasis that was um, the concern and emphasis that was put on uh, the arts uh, during COVID, both when we were remote and then also coming back, that that was really, um, it wasn't just take, we didn't take things lightly. We really thought about how do we make it a possible experience for all ages. And so that was that was significant to me that it wasn't when it was easy. Um, it, it's always there in our thinking. Thanks, Diane. Chris, you're next. Um, I think what is significant for us is the um, vigilance that we need to exhibit in safeguarding the arts um, and funding for the arts, um, even when there can be creep of the importance of other areas of our of our uh, curriculum uh, but just understanding the uh, the trickle down and spreading effect that the arts have on students and in our community uh, so just uh, maintaining our vigilance on that thank you thank you uh, lindy and then maggie um i think significance for me is the new well they're not that new but the system of grading, even though we don't call it that, um, because having a child who went through U32 and was very interested in exploring more of the arts, but didn't want to mess up his GPA because you got a grade for your art. And there was concern of this grade when you were more of a math science person. And I think the proficiency might take some of that away because I always thought, you know, a lot of those courses when I was in community college and college or college courses where you take them are pass fail. And this particular child questioned how a teacher could grade creativity. And proficiency, it seems like, is a better way of looking at an artistic endeavor. And that's you know, we still are making these charts of who's made proficiency because our schools have not caught up with, and I don't just mean our school, I mean universities, everybody, um, with how we judge if a child is ready for whatever next step is. But it always bothered me that the schedule quite often, if you were in the math science kind of track, it usually conflicted with the arts or it was hard. So when you could get a course, to then worry about getting a grade. And I think the proficiency might be, I mean, it's a very nice route or it seems to be, but we're still quantifying. <laughs> really, uh, really interesting point. And it reminds me of that part of the mission that talks about nurturing lifelong learners. Uh -huh. uh, Maggie, what's the good idea? Uh, the question is about what do we need to be, what's, what strikes us as significant? Yes. <clears throat> so um, going back to the educators providing pr providing the arts education, you know, ha we have some very talented, um, mm. committed staff, and um, it, it strikes me that we need to be really thoughtful about 
position changes and ensuring that people continue to um, feel like working for the district is, is um, an option for them in terms of staffing changes. Thank you, Maggie. Any other points of significance? Jonathan. Yeah, just quickly, thank you, Kari. Uh, what strikes me is we don't require more art and more music from elementary through high school because that would be, that would be, uh, it'd be wonderful. So. Nice. Okay, why don't we move on to the last question, which is what are the implications? I think we heard a little bit from Chris about funding as, and Maggie about staffing. What other implications does this bring up for you? I'll, I'll share one, which is, uh, well, a couple things. One is that th there's an implication that, um, that because this is a source of strength for us, it, 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 I almost think of it in, in the business terms as a competitive advantage. And, and it, it, we want to nurture this because it is a draw to our district for people either moving in or, or, or what have you. Um, and then it, it also has the ability to inspire both students and the community at large. And I think, you know, I think Dennis said it really well in terms of um, great society. So uh, the best implication. Uh, Jonas, please. No, I think Maggie was first. Go ahead, Maggie. Um, so again, going back to, to changing culture and more digital media based culture and um, I think Flora spoke to this earlier as well, you know, how I, I know we have um, students developing basic websites um, at a, an early age and then using that in, in coursework, um, like in my son's global studies class, that was a, a recent requirement. And there's a, a lot of art, artistic requirements in terms of career options as we're thinking about, you know, how education is changing in terms of preparing kids for um, for career paths. And um, I think we can also emphasize that, that as a district, um, when we think about preparing um, these learners for adult options for career paths. Thank you, Maggie. Uh, Jonas, you're next. Yeah, um, I, you know, I, I love what Jonathan said about wanting to, to teach more. One of the things that I've learned over the last couple of years of being on the school board is how tightly choreographed the school day is and how little five minute increments can make a huge difference to instructors. Um, when we were talking about the string program a couple of years ago, one of the caveats from the administration was we don't do this yet, you know, don't make a decision and drop the hammer and, and do this immediately. Let us look at our planning. Let us look at our schedules and see what we can fit in. Um, um, I, 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 I wish we could do more art. Um, I also wish we could do more math. Um, and I think that we need to, we need to temper um, <sighs> either extend the school day or the school year or, or, or temper our, uh, our hopes and dreams for, for all that stuff because there's just not enough minutes in the day. So true. Uh, Floor and then Ursula. Yeah, m mine is really similar to what Jonas was saying. I, I think we, I think we have heard from our administrators and our principals that know best our student needs that there's a finite amount of time, right? So, so how do we, uh, again, to mention how do we do that cross curricular connection, and how do we continue to fund our values, right? We know that art is our values. So, what do we take as a, uh, as a board is in uh, that that funding needs to represent our, our our values too, but we also know what the needs of our students are. So it's just that you know we we are gonna have to continue to to balance that and in and as a board also as we move our meetings uh, as a combination of in person and remote. How do we integrate the arts into showcasing the arts for our community uh, too and in our meetings, right? Like we are really lucky. To have what we have, but like bringing more of that student voice into into 
those decisions uh, too, because we have also the flexible pathways, right? We have all of this more individualized learning opportunities too. So maybe within that, and I'm, I'm just throwing ideas, uh, but that's outside of our scope, right? We need to continue to fund uh, our vision and our mission and our values. Thank you, Flora. Ursula? Laura might have been reading my mind a little or I read hers. I think I was going to say that it's significant to us is how can we as a board support the administration and the leadership team to allow the students to do like maybe these multidiscipline projects for a classroom. And I'm sure they do some already and I not the board's place to direct curriculum, but I want to support the administration in can they look at those projects that a child does that has maybe some implication to their global studies class and an art class or a music class and have it count towards both? And then it helps a little bit with that time commodity that we have, but it's how do we support the administrative team to do that? Thank you, Ursula. Okay, so thank you, everybody. I thought that was really great. A lot of engagement with it. Um, we could probably go on for another hour, but I think we're at time. I want to thank Jen for putting this together, and I'm really looking forward to uh, to the next one. And um, and um, the Ed Quality Committee will um, be meeting and um, support you in uh, in 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 this review and our sort of study of the student learning outcomes. So. Thanks, uh, and back to you, Flora. Thank you, Carrie, for leading us. And thank you, Jen, also for that wonderful presentation. Uh, um, we're, we're gonna move in into our, yeah, our, our big session. We have been sitting for a little while. It's gonna be uh, you know, a nonstop. So I'm gonna suggest that we take three minutes, go to the bathroom, get whatever you need uh, for sitting still for another, at least another hour and a half. <laughs> Is Jen? Yeah, I would just um, love to. I'm so grateful that our administrators have been here for this. It was important. Um, it was lovely for them to participate and to hear your thoughts and feelings um, around this. I think that it's the on the uh, heels of an approved budget for next year. It, this is part of the budget process that we've talked about doing all year round, right? Like we've just mentioned that. So I'm thrilled that they were here and they have a ton to do. So I would love to uh, excuse them for the evening with gratitude for their attendance thus far and wish them well. Um, a few a few central office folks have to stay because of later business, um, but principals and others, feel free to go. Thank you. And thank you for being here, all of you. Okay, so is 718. And let's come back at uh, 722 <laughs> for a minute, okay? Um, okay. Welcome back, everybody. So first is uh, we're going to sort of start again, reception of guests. <laughs> and uh, any public comments? I don't see any members of the public right now. I just wanted to do a quick, you know, a quick comment here. We are having a very our budget plus. Uh, you know, uh, we're welcoming new board new board members, and you know, it's beautiful and and in snowy this past couple of days, and everybody had a time to relax. Or our administrators and some others have time to take a little well deserved time off. I also wanted to, you know, uh, say that you know we are. Uh, I think we're all are incredibly inspired by the Ukrainian people right now and their their bravery and uh, I don't know I, I feel a lot of proud and admiration for how they are handling things and that also influences our, our kids I know they are all talking about it too so uh, you know hoping that light will prevail over darkness and just wanted to start our meeting with with that. It's hard to not feel interconnected with the rest of the world in our field. <laughs> and now I wanted to move. A, there's a, I'm going to do a couple of agenda revisions. A, we're going to do the board operations and all of that, but I wanted to a, 
uh, consider moving uh, our finance committee uh, part, just the uh, air handling part uh, up so that Chris doesn't have to wait for too long, uh, if that's okay. But I also, uh, so I'm gonna do that, Chris, in, but I wanted to take advantage. I know that most of the administrators already left, but I wanted to take a minute for all of us to introduce ourselves um, properly. And since Chris is with us, it's a good time for, for, for them to get to know you uh, too, Chris, especially because we have new board members. So I, I just gonna go through the windows. I, some of you have already introduced yourselves, but I'm gonna go through the windows and I'm actually gonna let the administrators that are here introduce themselves first. And that, that includes you, Chris. So I'm gonna let Jen and Jen, can you pass it on? Sure, so I am Jen Miller Arsno, and most of you, if not, I know, and I am, um, I've been the curriculum director here since July of 2012. I'm serving as your interim superintendent for this school year and will uh, resume my responsibility as, as curriculum director on July 1st. And I will pass it to Chris O'Brien. Hey, good evening. Uh, my name is Chris O'Brien. I'm the uh, director of facilities for the district. Um, and I started in June, so I'm, I'm fairly new. So I'm glad to meet everybody. Suzanne, do you want to, and then pass it on to somebody. I'm Suzanne Gann. I'm the business administrator for the district. I also started last June, so I'm pretty new to uh, the district and I've really enjoyed working with this team here. Um, Mark. Hello, I'm Mark Klein. I'm the director of technology and I started in July. So you hear a lot of that started this summer. Uh, so hello. Thank you, Mark. I'm going to let Lisa, who's usually on their cover there, but I'm going to let her introduce herself too. She's an amazing minute taker. Oh, hi. <laughs> um, my name is Lisa Grace. I actually have kids that graduated from U32 and I've been taking board minutes for a long time for a lot of different boards and this is my favorite. So nice to meet you all. Thank you. Is that, I'm going to pass it to Jonas and then pass it on to Jonas. Uh, hi, I'm Jonas Eno Van Fleet. I'm a board member from Worcester. I'm beginning my second full third year term today. I've got two kids. I've got a son in fifth grade at Doty in Worcester. And um, a, um, a my second son is turning five tomorrow. We'll be in kindergarten next year. Um, and tomorrow he's getting a COVID shot for his birthday. So bully for him. Oh, and I will pass it to uh, to Maggie. My name's Maggie Weiss. I live in East Cal. Um, fulfilled the remainder of Dorothy Nader's seat and um, just ran and um, I'm joining the board for a three year term. Um, I have one student currently a freshman at U32 and um, in combination with both my kids have been a parent in the district for uh, about 15 years now. Um, yeah, happy to be here. Do you want to pass it? Uh, just Vera, introduce yourself and pass it on. Hi, my name is Vera Frazier, and I am a representative from Berlin. I have a daughter that graduated from U32 in 2020 and a daughter who currently is a freshman. Um, I've been part of the board for, I think going on 14 years now on and off, um, served on multiple different committees. And um, the last few months has been a little difficult um, for me to attend a lot of board meetings. I lost my dad in October. So I've had to pick up a lot on the um, family farm. So I'm looking forward to better times and being able to attend more meetings. And I'm gonna pass it on to Chris McVeigh. Hi, um, 
I'm Chris McVeigh. Let me see. Yeah, I'm uh, from Middlesex. Um, I've served on the board for a while, and um, I'm really happy to see new members coming on to the board. And we now have a full Middlesex contingent um, with Dennis Hill uh, having been elected this year. And I'm going to pass it on to Dennis as our new uh, board member from Middlesex. Thanks very much, Chris. A little solidarity in the Middlesex community here. That's good. Um, so I'm Dennis Hill. I am a 25-year veteran of uh, Vermont public education, serving as principal and assistant principal in a variety of schools across the state. I am really excited about being here, as I mentioned before, and I have three grandchildren that are all at East Montpelier Elementary School. I know that the white beard makes me look young, but I have three grandchildren at uh, East Montpelier, and I'm super excited about being able to uh, support them and, and all students. And that's really what I've kind of committed my experience to. And I um, would like to continue to do that here. And I'm, I, got, I said it again, I'll say it, or I said it before and I'll say it again. I'm really excited about being here and I want to thank you for um, having me and um, looking forward to working with everybody. And I'm going to pass it on to Daniel. I am Daniel Keeney from Callis. I've been in Callis for six years. Um, I have a son brushing his teeth behind me, um, who's five and in kindergarten, Callis Elementary, and a two-year-old daughter who's starting uh, pre-K at, at Callis this coming fall. Uh, and yeah, professionally, I am a farm business planner at the Center for an Agricultural Economy in Hardwick. So working in the food system, both with value-added food processors and farmers. I'll pass to Ursula. Hi, I'm Ursula Stanley. I am in Middlesex. I just got reelected for a three-year term. I came in in August of last year to fill an empty position and I'm glad to be here. I have a ninth grader at U32 and I have a third grader at Romney. It's hard to keep track of where they are. Um, I think that's all I'm going to add. Pass, I'm going to pass it to McKaylin. Um, I'm McKaylin LeClaire. I live in Worcester. Um, I started in August filling a vacancy and now just got reelected or got elected, I should say. Um, I have deep, deep roots in this district. My mother was a teacher at U32 and I graduated from Doty and U32. And now I have um, a kindergartner and a fifth grader at U32, uh, at, U32 at Doty. Um, I myself taught for a few years and then um, decided teaching was too hard. So I went to medical school <laughs> and um, I'm a doctor out in Hardwick at the Hardwick Health Center, a family doctor. So that's me. And I will pass it to who? To Kari? I don't think Kari wanted me. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm Kari Bradley from Callis and I was on the uh, U32 board for six years and, and change and this is the start of my third year on the, on the Unified District Board. And um, I have three children that went through the um, district and I myself am a proud alumni. And um, I, I'm pretty excited about this year. I think this is gonna be the best yet. And I'm gonna pass it to Lindy. Hi, I'm Lindy Johnson from East Montpelier. And I taught at East Montpelier, and then I also worked in the district as a literacy coordinator for a few years. Um, I have two sons who went through the system and graduated from U32. Um, I currently work in the Essex, Essex Westford district. Couldn't think of the name there for a minute. And have, was, have been on the board since it first as an East Montpelier board member and then the unified board. And really enjoy um, supporting our schools through this venue. Diane. Hi, I'm Diane Nichols Fleming. I'm a representative of Berlin. Um, <clears throat> we've, we've lived in Berlin for 32 years now. And so we have two kids who went through the 
this system. My first board meeting was March of 2020. So I was able to be in person once. And then after that, we quickly shut down. So, but it's, it's been okay. We're, we're still, we're doing okay. Um, and the, uh, uh, to me, a testimony of U32 and, and the work that our schools do, uh, both of my kids did well. Um, my daughter had different interests and then took part in branching out and, and um, discovered astronomy and science. And she just she's doing grad work now at Brown and she was just published and was quoted in Forbes. So it's just a real, you know, I have to have that mom brag moment. So don't tell my son that I bragged about her, but anyway, you know, we'll be okay. So. <laughs> and Jonathan. I'm Jonathan Goddard. Uh, I live in Berlin uh, and a re representative from Berlin. I have three, uh, well, young adults now, but three graduates of U32 in the district uh, as well. And um, I can safely say that I know that they really enjoyed their time at U32 and at Berlin Elementary. And uh, I think there's a lot that that is offered to to our kids and uh, all your students, you know, for younger parents out there, right? And so there's there's really a lot um, that that they can they can really take part in, um, whether it's athletics or arts or many other things. So it's it is an exciting time. So thank you. Okay, I think that's everybody. So I'm Florida Smith. I've been a board member for I don't know past 13 years. Then at East Montpelier and three, and I just ran again for this three years. I have two kids. One is a 10th grader. I use 32, and his favorite class actually for a sports guy is Adrian's class. So, and she knows that. <laughs> and which was great because it, he was not usually that was it so it, it was just timely with what we're doing right now and I have a, a 20 year old just turned 20 today at Colorado yeah, Colorado College so I graduate from U32 and with that finally Chris we're gonna move into you and Susan so that you can get a break and go have some dinner <laughs> okay Thank you, Flora. So I wanted to <clears throat> talk about our um, U32 air handling project. So I'll read down through the uh, document and we'll go from there. Um, so Washington Central Unified Union School District solicited bids to eight vendors for U32 air handling unit project. We received one bid from Alliance Mechanical on February 18th for the U32 air handling unit bid. The following vendors did not provide a bid. Sheet Metal Specialist, Chuck's Heating, Cooper Mechanical, Vermont Mechanical, New England Air Systems, Avonda Air Systems, and ARC Mechanical. The low base bid amount is $289,370 provided by Alliance Mechanical. This amount decreases by $69,130 for, for alternates, <coughs> alternates for a combined total of $220,240. A project budget would include 10% contingency for change orders, a, uh, a total budget of $242,264. These are sufficient funds, I'm sorry, there are sufficient funds in the capital fund to cover the full estimated cost of the project. It is recommended for approval of the bid provided by Alliance Mechanical contingent upon approval of a waiver from the Agency of Education. So motion um, approve the bid award to Alliance Mechanical in the amount of 289,370 decreased by $69,130 for alternates for a combined total of 220,240 plus 10% contingency for a grand total of $242,264. So, uh, Chris, do you have any new information? So, the just to clarify to the board members, the finance committee met and we went over the the bid with Chris and Bill, and uh, we had asked them to look into more information. Chris, uh, my bet, McVeigh had suggested that we uh, include it the other elements. So, I don't know if you have any new information, Chris, or if this is what you're recommending. 
Yeah, so the four, uh, the alternates, the four alternates are air handler units 11, 12, 13, and 14, and they're all in the gym. And those were new in the year 2000, so those are 22 years old. All the other air handler units um, are from 1970 or early 70s, so about 52 years old. So what we were, um, were thinking was that we would wait until we did the ERU upgrades in I think year 25, 26 to reevaluate those four okay. air handler units in the gyms. Um, I just, just don't feel like it's, it's needed at this point. Thank you, Chris. So could I okay. have a motion and then we can have more discussion. I'm moving it for it. I'm, I'll move it that we, um, Approve the bid award to Alliance Mechanical in the amount of $289,370, decreased by $69,130 for the alternatives uh, for a combined total of $220,240 plus a 10% contingency uh, for a total amount of $242,264 which would be paid out of fund balance. Thank you. I'll, Chris. I'll second it. So move, Chris, second by Lindy. Any other discussion? Chris, this is Dennis Hill, real quick. What is, you said there was an AOE waiver required. Can you just share that with me? I wasn't quite sure what that's about. Yeah, so when we have, and I, I can let Suzanne speak to, to this, but it's required by law that we get at least three bids. So when we don't get three bids, we have to go Fact that we have to get a waiver and it's, it's best practice to get three. In, yeah. in this case, we're even worse because we usually sometimes get two. In this case, we just got one. But it, yeah, it's usually not hard. But Suzanne, do you want to add anything to that? No, I think you summarized that well. The only other thing I would say about Chris's motion is that it's actually out of the capital fund, not the fund balance. Oh, and I'll make it for <laughs> Make a friendly amendment to my own um, motion uh, to uh, substitute capital fund for fund balance. Thank you, Sue. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? <laughs> Daniel, I apologize for. I was just. <clears throat> I was going to ask if there was any discussion with the contract, or the 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 only bid we got, but that contractor um, about preventive maintenance and whether there are going to be any ongoing costs in terms of uh, them uh, revisiting campus and, and doing that work? Or is that something that will fall on, on your team, Chris? Well, for, for U32, um, internally, we do a lot of that work, um, changing the filters, changing out some bearings and, and belts and stuff like that. Um, as far as a, a, a PM, um, process with Alliance. I mean, right now we really just pull them in if we have like a, a major failure that we, we can't handle. Some of the elementary schools we do um, have them um, do PMs for us. Uh, but at U32, we have that uh, resource in house for, for to a certain extent, right? Mm -hmm. Daniel, sorry, did that answer your question? Yeah, I, th I think so. Yeah, I just that because <laughs> I didn't want us to be in a position where we were on the hook for sort of pr proprietary preventive maintenance for going out, you know, a decade or more. Oh, no, 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 not at all. I mean, that's that that's not the case. Thank you, Chris. And Chris, my, you know, yeah, go ahead. Um, hey, Chris, um, was there any uh, contact or response from uh, Alliance Mechanical about um, a potential contingency on the bid um, and them having the opportunity, having the uh, bandwidth to be able to do this extra work, the alternatives, um, if the bid that we're waiting on for the other projects at Rumney and other places comes in so that we could do both at the same time? Do we hear it back from Alliance Mechanical on that at all? Not, 
not to my knowledge, Chris. No, I, I don't know if Suzanne has got her yeah, hand yeah. up. Yeah, we did hear back from them, and they're willing to uh, hold the bid for thirty days, including those uh, alternatives. So if days. we get that, if we get that information back within the thirty days from their bid date, then they would be willing to do the alternates. And so then the bid date was from was what we have here. Uh, was it the February eighteenth? Yeah. February eighteenth. Okay. Um, and just for the board's information, we had a discussion at the uh, finance committee about whether we, uh, you know, my concern was that. Prices are going up, and we have a, a what I thought was a, a good bid. And I think um, Bill Ford said it was pretty good price uh, for what we for the alternatives now. Whether or not we would just um, fund the whole thing now uh, with the contingency that because there was concern that these other bids that are not yet in might go over budget, and so I think this taking out these alternatives now was to create room for these other projects to come back um, so that we would see where they were. And um, I was uh, proposing that we, uh, you know, approve this bid with a contingency that if those other bids came back and we had the room to do all of the work that was actually bid, that we move forward with that just to avoid any uh, potential increases in the future um, because of, uh, you know, things usually go up. Um, so that was, that was the discussion we had, and that's what I was concerned about. So if, are we ready to vote in the motion as, as it is? Great, okay. All those in favor of the motion as read by Chris and second by Lindy, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Hearing none, the motion carries. So thank you, Chris and Suzanne. Uh, you have what you need to continue. Thanks, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. All right. So let's move on into board. It says board orientation, but it's, it's a little bit of everything. So if you guys have that little memo that I had sent you and your page number five, either on your screen, we're going to try to go through that in, in some kind of quick and systematic order so that we're not here for, 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 for too long. So I'm gonna, we already did the board chair, the vice chair and the clerk. So I wanted to move into the, the different committees, starting with the steering committee and for the new board members to know in our practice, I put it in the memo, but just in case our practice has been to include the, the chair, the vice chair, and the clerk into the steering committee. What the steering committee does is just really um, advise on the agenda and pre to have uh, time to meet and give information so that we're prepared for the next board meeting and we're collaboratively working on the, on the agenda. And the two other members are whoever are not represented within those towns. So right, right now we would have a Jonas a, from a Worcester, Carrie from Callas and myself from East Montpelier. So we would be looking for a Berlin a resident and a Middlesex a resident. So the Berlin resident has been Diane in the past. And if you're still willing to do it, Diane, we will work with your schedule. Obviously we would be behind. We meet the first, a, we moved it to the first Wednesday of the month in, uh, in the morning. At uh, 9 a.m. Yeah. Yes, that's the world. Yeah, and this particular time is going to be the second Wednesday, just because we were not a board yet. <laughs> but as we move on, it's going to be the first Wednesday. So I'm uh, Diane. Will you still be willing to serve for Berlin? Yes, unless Vera or Jonathan would like to. I'll just quit. I, there's, um, there's no way I would be able to at this point in time. So if you would, Diane, I would really appreciate that. Okay. And now from Middlesex, and then I will look for a motion from 
both uh, together. For Middlesex, we had had gel in in the past, so um, I'm wondering if you know Ursula or Dennis. Uh, not, I would not be available at that time. Just based on that. I would I would urge Ursula to be our our representative. I'm willing to. All right. So now, could I have a motion for Diane and Ursula? I uh, will move uh, to add Ursula uh, from Middlesex and Diane from Berlin to the steering committee. A second. Second. I'll second it. Lindy, great. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Okay, so steering committee, and uh, I'm just gonna do a quick check in with Lisa. Lisa, you have that memo, and you're you're good. Sorry. Lisa. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I just don't want to move too quickly, and yeah. then. I got it. So okay. then we have, we we have the 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 policy committee. We, we're trying to get everybody kind of on a on a schedule. The policy committee now is gonna meet, and I'm looking into Jen and Chris on Tuesday. Second Tuesday, right? We've been second Tuesdays about four thirty to six thirty. Okay, so we would be looking for three members for the policy uh, committee. Second Tuesday, four thirty to six thirty. And at the moment, we in the past we have had Chris. So, it, are there any hands you can volunteer? This is a very informal because we're trying to fill a lot of committees, and you can be in two committees if if you want. And Chris, do you want to talk a little bit about the policy committee? Sure. Um, and then Jonathan, you can talk after. So, the policy committee is um, composed of three board members and um, a number of administrators, including um, our uh, superintendent. Um, and it's it's actually an an enjoyable con committee we have good discussions uh hear a lot about how the uh, schools really operate by uh having comments from the administrators on the policies that are are being um proposed or modified uh and it's it's enjoyable so i would uh, you know I, i'm gonna hopefully continue to serve on it and would um hope others join uh the policy committee lindy has been a uh, a member for about a year i think and uh been great to work with. Uh, Scott was with us, but now he's he is retired, collecting a pension from the from the district as he sits in his retirement. Um, so we, we have an opening, but it's not limited to three either. It's not, you know, we like to have three members, but it's as many who want to participate are, are welcome. Yeah. And Natasha's so about you? to join us too. So Jonathan, you had a question? Or you want to yeah, well, not so much a question, just that it ex to express my interest in the policy committee. I previously served on the E32 policy committee for quite a while, and I, I'd certainly like to do that again. Okay, this sounds great. I'm going to take a minute to let Natasha welcome, introduce herself. Everybody had a chance to introduce themselves before, Natasha, but welcome. Thank you for, sorry that we couldn't adjust the meeting, but oh. <laughs> thanks for being here. <laughs> no problem. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Natasha. Thanks. I'm um, serving on behalf of the town of Worcester. I apologize for being late. I just got finished with a four-hour mediation session. So <laughs> I'm not here. <laughs> so Natasha, we are talking about the policy uh, committee right now. Uh, we're, we're on page uh, five and three of, the, uh, of, of your packet. Okay. And we're looking for interest in the in the policy committee. I think we have uh, Lindy and Jonathan and Chris interested, right? It, Lindy, your hand is up. Is that why it's up? Yes, yeah. I have been on it, and I was on it before. You know, I was on and off. But the Tuesday at four thirty is really hard for me. So it'd be better if there's someone else because I have a meeting and every Tuesday until four in Essex, and then I like to get home for my Zooms. <laughs> Otherwise I'm in Essex till the 6.30 and then driving home. So um, if someone else, if there's others to step up, I'll stay on the education quality and step up because I've been on that one as well. I'm interested in the policy committee where if that's available. Yeah, 
that, that'll be great. And there and is, there's no limit. I put numbers just because I wanted to have a minimum of people, but, and you can participate in several committees if you have the bandwidth to do that. Sure. So uh, we have Dennis, uh, oh, uh, Maggie. Just a, a question. Um, as we move through um, our distance meeting back into face-to-face, -face, how will these committees be handled um because that is logistically important you know from a regular workday schedule standpoint yeah and we're, we're gonna have that conversation afterwards but I, I i feel like each committee should be able to meet elect their chair and decide what works best for 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 that committee but i i i, I don't see a reason to move committee meetings in person particularly, but I'm looking at, at, at others. It's always, you know, it would be too, it's different than the full board meeting uh, to me, because I know the capacity of everybody is, it, it, it would be hard to go back to all times in everything. So, you know, in negotiations, I think it's different. <laughs> it could be a mix, but I did, your, did the committees people. previously meet in person or were they? Yeah, yeah, committees and yeah. everything. Yeah, we didn't know about Zoom before. We have always do everything in person before. I, I, you know, things have changed definitely. And we've learned that we can actually do some work remote too. But in the past, we were all going to central office or to this the high school or wherever the committee, that we had a room where they met. And yeah, so I'm, I'm looking to, to, to others, for for example, the policy committee, uh, since we're talking about policy right now, uh, Chris, do you, or Jen, do you have something to, yeah? Well, I know historically the policy committee met at central office, yeah. um, again, fourth or uh, second Tuesday. I think it's important for people to be able to get back together, but not, you know, at least to get to meet in person, but also to preserve the the ability to meet remote too, if that's what works best for everybody's schedule. So as long as it's what we are trying to do is to have a consistent. So we know that, you know, policy meets on Tuesday, it, steering committee meets on Wednesday, it, like it's a that people, if you want to attend as a board member, you know when it happens and it becomes a habit. So it, we don't stop making it happen. So uh, Chris, you had your hand up before I interrupt. I do. So um, if the various committees decide to, to the extent they can, we meet, meet remotely, uh, we'll still have the support from uh, Mark, for instance, in sending up Zoom in central office and sending up Zoom and having the it open to the public because these are public meetings, right? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. We will okay. follow, yeah, yeah, yeah. We will make everything by law and Melissa would be our support and we, yeah, yeah. So you would have the agenda okay. that will post, yeah, all of the, yeah. yeah. Great, thank you. Can just, cause I know we're running, I wanna keep the momentum going. So right now, I, I believe we have Dennis, uh, Chris and Jonathan. Jonathan, Jonathan. yeah. yeah. Could I have a motion for the policy committee? Um, I move that we appoint uh, Chris. Wait, wait. So, Chris, why don't you let somebody else, just because you are part of Oh, fine. Of I'm it. just yeah, trying to move along. Yeah. Sure. Diane, I, <laughs> yeah, anybody. <laughs> I will move that the policy committee be composed of Chris McVeigh, Jonathan Goddard, and Dennis Hill. Thank Again. you. Thank you, Ursula. Is that right? <laughs> No, sorry, okay. Yeah, okay. Sorry, I was not looking at the monitor and I'm like, okay, sorry. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. So moving right along, negotiations committee. And I'm going to let Jonas talk about this. And I'm looking at the very last member that joined our, our meetings right now. Yes, I'm looking at that very last member as well. Um, <laughs> so um, this negotiations is hard. Um, thankfully, we had this year off. Um, so I'm looking to get like a 19 year deal next year or something like that. Um, it's a lot of meetings while we're negotiating, which is usually from December through March or April. No, we went, we went all the way into May or June last year, didn't we? 
Um, it's two meetings a month. There's coordinating meetings. There's executive sessions to discuss uh, negotiating strategy. Um, it uh, it's it's a commitment. Um, um, but I've learned more from that process than from anything else I've done on the board. Um, Diane uh, was awesome during the last round, and Stephen, God bless him. Um, and previously, George Gross uh, is not on the board anymore. I think Vera, you were you were part of that, or was it Lindy? I, I can't forget. It was like a lifetime ago. Um, I would love uh, for anyone else who wanted to to take over the chair of that committee because it's even more of a commitment. Um, but I, um, if no one wants to do that, I, I, I will do it. Um, um, so I, I don't want to have, you know, um, um, made this sound really unappealing. Um, <laughs> but it is, but it is a lot of work and it's a, it's a, it's a pretty big commitment. So Diane, I'd love to have you back. Lindy, I'd, I'd, love to I'd have be you back. willing to co-chair with you as well, Jonas. Um, yeah. Would you? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's yeah. fun. If we could split that, Diane, I'd be so grateful. Yeah. Fantastic. Natasha. <laughs> um, so, I, so I just uh, full disclosure. Um, I would be more than happy to sit on that committee. However, I'm just questioning whether it's a conflict of interest because of my job. So I don't want to put myself in a position that's going to compromise the process. Okay. Thank you, Natasha. You could just quit your job. <laughs> I mean, if you want to pay me. <laughs> <laughs> you you mean the the, the stipend doesn't work? No, just kidding. I mean, I, I I would love to, but again, I don't because of conflict of interest. I just I don't want to create any kind of issue when you have to. Who would we who who would we go speak to? Who would we talk to about whether that would be a conflict of interest? I mean, I think the SBA, you know, and certainly the, the NEA would. I, and would, if you if you're interested, I mean, let's try and track it down and see if there's a real issue there. I I, I hear you, you know, and I know you to be a deeply ethical person. Um, yeah. But I would love to have your experience and your voice on on the, in, in that work. Okay, I mean, if if um, so, I work for Vermont NEA, <laughs> so mm -hmm. I do negotiations. Um, I forgot about and, that. Yeah. Yeah. So just to clear that up for everybody. So. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I, I just, again, I part, you know, some of the conversations we have at my job have to do with yeah. you know, negotiations around the state. So that would, um, you know, short of my, me recu recusing myself from conversations at work to stay away from that. It, I think it might be difficult for me to walk that line. And again, I just, I want the process to be as authentic as possible. Thank you, Natasha. It, Lindy, would you be? Lindy? Yeah, I think it would clearly be a conflict um, and an issue. And I know in the past, one of the other conflicts we've had is when one of us was a spouse of a teacher in the schools because it affects the negotiation of our spouse's salaries. Mm -hmm. So those people also stayed off of negotiating committees because of that. But I think if you're working with Vermont NEA, that that I agree. <laughs> yeah no. yeah it won't that's just yeah, that, right. that it's not yeah I had totally forgot about that and that's, that's what I figured that's why I wanted to <laughs> yeah thank you for putting it out thank right you yeah so, so I really appreciate it so so it looks so, like we have Jonas I, I'd be Oster. interested in serving on the negotiations okay so fantastic Jonas Diane and and Chris Can, do we need a motion? Mm -hmm. Someone other I than move. me or Chris or? I, yeah. I move to add Jonas, Anno Van Fleet, Chris McVeigh, and Diane Nichols Fleming to the negotiations with me. Second. Thank you, Jonathan. Right, I got that right, no. Well, Daniel. No, I'm not looking. Oh, Daniel, <laughs> sorry. I'm like, I need to, I'm like not writing quick enough. I'll get used to it. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you, Diane.
Any opposed? Thank you, Chris. Okay. So you guys are all set. And now let's say uh, the, the finance committee uh, in the past has had three members at least. Uh, so Kari has been part of our, our group. I am in the finance committee too. Um, and Ursula has been attending some of our meetings too, but it's open to all board members in any event, but I, I would like to have at least three constant members and Chris has participated before too, but I, um, there's opportunity for new board members to participate on on this, we do meet in the in the in the mornings. Uh, we meet at eight o'clock, well eight thirty, eight thirty, and we had been meeting the Tuesday before, but we're going to move it to the first Tuesday of of the month, and we meet from eight thirty to nine thirty. And I know that, but we can also figure it out with uh, with people's commitment. Uh, we try to not add another night meeting for our administrators too, because Suzanne. And Jen also they sit in this in these meetings. So I'm wondering if there's any other volunteers. Okay, don't get too excited. It's really exciting because this is where you get to fund all that we believe on. So yeah, the finance <laughs> committee is the room where it happens. Is it yeah, Natasha? Yeah, I'd be interested. Okay. So Natasha, Kari, would you still be willing to serve? And I know that you stepped down for yeah, a little yeah, period. Yeah, I can but... continue to do my, my seasonal attendance. Yeah, and, yeah. And okay. okay. So would somebody be willing to do a motion? Oh, the, Jen. I just had a quick question. Sorry, um, Flora. Did we decide first Tuesdays or second Tuesdays? I'm feeling like I got confused there because we'd moved it from third and I just... I'm not oh, you're right. You're you're right. The you're second right. Tuesday we second had Tuesday. Said. Yeah. Second Tuesday. Yeah. But you know, if it needed to be first for some members, it is the thing is that it's 8 30 to 9 30. Uh, Natasha, do you have a preference or Carrie? Um, and Jen too, because you are the second is best, or because we would have more information is what we had said, right, Suzanne? Yeah, yeah. So second Tuesday. Either of those would work for me. Okay. Second. <laughs> Good. I have a motion. And it would be Natasha, Kari, and myself. I'll move that Natasha, Kari, and Floor are on the finance committee. Second. Second. Okay. <laughs> okay. Diane, I'm going to give it to Ursula, Chris, sorry. See. You both were competing for the same. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. <clears throat> and then in the communications committee, it's really more about community engagement. We had created an informal community engagement committee. And Maggie, you were part of this with McKaylin. And I'm wondering if you guys would be willing. It doesn't, I'm not looking for a schedule for you guys to meet or anything like that. It's more like, you know, what it is just support to spread the word. And, and you had been working on setting a goal. So, so it's still like a committee information, I would call it. <laughs> so would you two be, still be willing? And I, I put three members, but it can be anything. Yeah. 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 Just FYI, you skipped education quality. Oh, just, just so yeah, you don't forget yeah. to go back to it. Yeah, no, no, no. I, yeah, I think education quality, a lot of people like to participate on that. So I am putting, I'm, I'm, I'm going to let education quality be at, at the end because we never have a lack of participants. It's the best committee as far as I'm concerned. I just don't want you to skip it. Um, but yeah. yes, I would be willing, to, uh, depending on when it was meeting, to still be on the communications or to start the communications committee with Maggie, if she's willing still. I'm, and I think I'm in the same boat, McKaylin working in healthcare. Um, I, I really don't have flexibility in the day as much as I do in the um, evening. So that that's a possibility. Yeah, and it's really just kind of providing input. And in, so, yeah, that's, it's okay. You, you guys will create your flexibility. So. Could we appoint both of you? 
Okay, I'm looking for a motion. I move that we add McKaylin and Maggie to the communications committee. Thank you, a second? Second. Thank you, Natasha. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And then in the transportation committee, we have had two people in the past. The transportation committee really doesn't need, we, we are the, the last bit that we had, I believe it was for three years, two or three years. So I don't, but it's good to have somebody uh, already appointed in case there's any need. So it's just two people. There is no official meeting day. Yeah. Then what, what would meetings be comprised of? Jen and Suzanne, yeah. Yeah, I can, I can speak. I didn't participate uh, directly this year, but it was mostly getting ready to go out to bid and then approve and make the recommendation for the bid. I think this year it was a pretty short, tight timeline. Some work over the course of, I don't know, six weeks-ish tops. Um, and then we have the bid that you all accepted for, I want to say it was three years, right? So um, Suzanne, what would you add to that? Uh, the bid is a three-year bid or award with an opportunity to extend for two. So it may even go five. So your commitment might not even be for five more years. Yeah. <laughs> uh, at the very least, it's three. <laughs> um, so that's what it is right now. I will sign up for a no work committee. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anybody else? Daniel? No. <laughs> no. Okay. Jonas. Sure, I'll be on it. Um, I was just clarification question about all these committees. I guess maybe it comes back to our communication practices, which is on your list of things to cover, but I'm curious about, I'm reluctant to volunteer to commit to things yet. I also want to sort of get a sense of the work of all of these committees. And I'm curious sort of the level of communication we have about sort of, I guess the standing meetings yeah, that's a good, it's a good over. question, Daniel. And yeah, the packets go to everybody. Everybody is welcome to, to the entire board. The, everybody is welcome to either visit the meeting or and fully participate as a, as, as, as a board member. The only committee that is different is the negotiations committee. And you understand why. <laughs> but everything else is, um, is, is open to all of the board members. And Floor, I, I recall Scott telling me that you have big power in those committees as well, even if you're not on the committee. Is that correct? Yeah, you voting voting power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You come to the mm -hmm. finance committee, you can be part of it. Yeah, and a lot of I remember that the committees don't do the committees help the board do its work. The committees don't yeah. make any decisions on behalf of the board. The board mm -hmm. makes a decision as a half. We come back to the board with recommendations is just to make mm -hmm. the work uh, to actually get the work done is that yeah. we need committees so so yeah you fully participate and that's why i'm keeping negotiations differently because that is you know once you are in negotiations you have had the training you have the relationships and that can't be back and forth we moved away of having alternates for negotiations because of that reason too so mm. um, does that help daniel Okay, so I'm sign we're signing you up for transportation with Jonas. Okay, a motion, please. I move that we add Jonas and Daniel to the transportation committee. Okay, and second. Dennis. Dennis. Second. I think Dennis got it. Sorry. Okay. okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, and now let's do the Ed Quality Committee, which I think. Ed quality, usually all the board members participate, but all of those who want to participate in the ed quality, please raise your hand. What's the time commitment and day of the week? Kari, I let you speak, but. So um, for the rest of the school year, I imagine it will be meeting monthly. We had been meeting at five o'clock on the Wednesday, the first, first Wednesday. Wednesday of the month? Yeah, first Wednesday, yeah. Um, for, so one hour a month, um, and um, we we have a we had one more student learning outcome to prepare for, and a couple other topics. We're going to make a recommendation about monitoring 
student learning outcomes in, in future years. And then we have to decide where we go from here as a committee, what, what else the board needs help with. So um, yeah, that's the rundown. So I put three people there, but it can be as many uh, board members as they want. And again, this is a committee that uh, a lot of the time all board members participate on. Because yeah, of the time, uh, McKaylin, you wanna, yeah. So put your, it, it, you know, so yeah. that we have a sense of who wants to be on it, all right? I I probably would like to participate, but I'm not sure that I can commit to another meeting just given my schedule in the month. So I I would just be a drop in when I can. If that makes sense. Yeah. Would you be willing to make a motion with the hands up, Dennis? Uh, sure. I would like to make a motion to. Uh, put Diane, uh, Nichols Fleming, Carrie Bradley, who else is up there? Uh, Flor Dia Smith, Natasha Banning, Lindsay Johnson, Ursula Stanley, um, into the Education Quality um, Committee. I'd also Maggie like and McHale and Leclerc. Maggie, and Maggie, were you and in there too? <laughs> yeah, Maggie and McKayla. Yeah. Maggie and McKayla. Did, did you get all of that? Mess? No. Can Lisa. you repeat the names? Sorry. I'll I'll be quick. Uh, if you could throw your hands up again, that'd be great, everyone, if you don't mind. So I've got Maggie Weiss, Lindy Johnson, Natasha Bain Banning or Banning? Banning. Banning. Uh, Diane Nichols Fleming, Carrie Bradley, uh, Ursula Stanley. McKaylin, were you in there as well? Yep. McKaylin LeClaire. And I believe that's it. Four. Four yes, yes, no. Sorry. The Zoom. Yay! <laughs> it's okay. We got it. A second. I will second that. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. We have all our committees. Congratulations, everybody. Uh, so moving right along <laughs> in board of operations. Uh, I don't know if you've had a chance. So we need to appoint our truant uh, officers. Any questions from new board members of what that means? I put the little definition there, but so could I have a motion to appoint our truant officers? I think Jen, Jen had her hand up. Yeah, yeah, Jen. We forgot in that notice to put U32 as the school. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had Stephen Dellinger, but yeah, sorry. U32 is actually uh, Eric Bennett. Yeah, I checked with Stephen today. Okay. Or Eric Dana Bennett. Bennett. So be looking for a motion. A move that we appoint um, Aaron Boynton of Bur at, at Berlin Elementary, Cat Fair at Callis Elementary, uh, Gillian Fuqua at Worcester, uh, at Doty Elementary, Caroline May at uh, Rumney Elementary, uh, uh, Alicia Lyford at East uh, Montoya Elementary School, and Eric Bennett at U32 middle and high school as truant officers for the year 2022 to 2023. Thank you, Chris. Yes. Okay, Jonah, second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Okay. So now we have to establish a regular uh, board meeting schedule. And right now we are meeting uh, the first Wednesday as community engagement and small board business uh, that we sometimes need to accomplish. I hear some echo, but can you guys hear me okay? Or is there somebody that, yep. yeah. Um, so I'd be looking for uh, a motion to I don't know what the echo is doing. But I think it's Maggie. Okay. Really? Maggie, can you mute? Yeah. Maybe it's you, Chris. It could be. Okay. Oh, yes. Thank you, everybody. Okay. So, so I'm looking for a motion for a regular to do a regular meeting the first and third Wednesday of, of the month. First Wednesday being community engagement and third Wednesday being our official board meeting. So move that we establish you know, a regular board schedule, first and third Wednesdays, first being a community forum. Thank you. Second. McKaylin, right? Natasha. 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 Yeah. 
All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. It, we're going to move into a, there, there's a couple of things that I wanted to, uh, but we can talk. It's been, uh, I don't want to get us out of our schedule for too long, but we'll use a, a board a retreat to potentially um, talk about the board development. Sometimes do board development instead of community engagement on the first Wednesday, but we can talk about that uh, uh, later. I do want to have a quick conversation before we move into norms. Well, let's do the norms first and then I'll do the retreat. So did you had a chance to look at the norms? I was hoping that you know we can accept the norms as they are right now and then use part of our retreat to look into the norms and see if we can add or, or clarify anything that is give the opportunity to new board members to have input on that too. But if we could just accept the norms for now, make a motion. I move that we accept the norms as currently constituted subject to revision as needed or proposed. Second. And Ursula, second, great. Yeah. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? The motion carries. Uh, and then the second part of this is having our first retreat. Uh, um, we not every we haven't had a retreat this year because we everybody got in a little bit later and in the midst of COVID we haven't we did not get a retreat in in August. So I we, if you guys could pull out your calendars, uh, we have connected with. Um, with uh, Megan too, and looking at August 13, uh, in the past our retreat, because it has to, you know, it, to make it worth it, it's like a day retreat, it's a Saturday to not conflict with work. And I know it conflicts with family, but it's not very often. If you could pencil in, we, we can change it if needed, but we were hoping to hold the, the August 13 date to have a retreat. Thumbs up or, yep. All right. I know I, I will only be able to attend the afternoon that day because our vacations are already planned for the summer and are okay. fixed. Okay. Any other board conflict? No, we don't need a motion for that. I just wanted to give you the, the, yeah. the heads up and we'll move. I will probably be away that weekend. You'll probably be away that weekend. Okay, so maybe I need to send. Okay. I hope to be away for a lot of weekends over the summer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think, you know, summer weekend board retreats, having been on other boards that have, have used that practice is frustrating. And if there is a possibility of not doing it on a weekend, or doing it as a lengthy evening event on a week work day would be greatly preferable. Okay. Just putting it out there. It's, you know, it's summer's very short. <clears throat> yeah, com yeah, completely un un understandable. It, we have it, in the past, we, it, what we do is as a board, we have no meetings in the month of July and the board takes July off and on, August, the practice has been to try to have a meeting at the beginning of August just to get us started, a, a, a board retreat, so that when we start our third uh, Wednesday of August, we are all in the same page and have had a time to come together without making it just uh, at night. But that is good good feedback. Let me get back to you guys with the feedback that you just gave us and have a couple of proposals mm -hmm. of how do we move with the retreat. Lindy? Well, I just would offer another um, in listening to what Maggie was saying, and I think this was maybe when it was still just East Montpelier board and we were at your house, but um, it was a afternoon into evening and we had a dinner and um, that in the weekday, you know, during a weekday. And I was wondering if 
and I, it doesn't have to be August 10th. I'm just looking at that week because you said the 13th, which would be a Wednesday because I get in the habit of saving my Wednesdays throughout the week in case a board special meeting or something comes up. If it was the 10th from three to eight or something like that might fit people's schedules better than a weekend. Even, you know, as a teacher, I won't be back at work yet, but Saturdays are my time with my husband too. So um, I, I think I understand that afternoon to, in the evening might be easier to, for some. Yeah, let me let me look at different times with with Megan too, and because I know that the leadership team is also meeting with uh, with with her and having their retreat. So let me see what other options are are, are available, and we'll do probably what we will end up doing is maybe do a doodle poll, and 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 see what works best for 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 people. But thank you for that for that input. Um, so uh, des designate, let's move on into designate uh, locations for hosting meetings and agendas. And, and just a reminder, that doesn't mean that that's the only places, but we have to at least have uh, three places where we, where we post them. And then it doesn't mean that if the communications community decides that there's so other places to post that, that would be fine, but we need to at least list three. Could I have a motion? I will move that we designate uh, locations for posting meeting agendas uh, at each school uh, on the uh, WCUUSD website and uh, in each town hall. Was that what is intended? Yeah, 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 yeah town clerk, yeah, yeah. Or town, town clerk's office, town hall. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Could I have a second? Second. Ursula. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Seeing none, the motion carries. Um, Robert rules. So we have to adopt Robert rules. We're a board that is a little bigger than 12. So we, we follow full Robert rules and we second motions. <laughs> so a, a, that's part of what we're doing today. So could I have a motion to accept that we'll be governed by Robert rules? So moved. Second. Second. Dennis and Diane. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And I added a little, there's a little place there to register if you're interested. Uh, the VSBA is providing a webinar on uh, on Robert rules, you know, so, and it's a good refresher for both uh, uh, returning board members and new board members. Jen, I saw your hand sort of going up. Do you have a question? No, okay. Uh, then uh, I also attached the code of ethics by this, by, and I've heard from some of you that wanted to, that had already signed it and wanted to send it. I just was wanting to have, uh, a discussion. I, I'm looking at Chris because I see your eyes are ready, Chris. There, but if there's any, uh, are everybody okay accepting the code of ethics and signing it? Chris, you ready? Okay. So um, <laughs> this has come up before other board meetings, and I've, I've um, opposed the code of ethics and requiring any signing. Um, you know, I think we certainly should have a code of ethics and adopt it as a board, but compelling a signature, I think it's beyond this board's power to do that. Um, I think it's also beyond the board's power to um, state that the, uh, to the extent that it, it um, is construed as preventing a board member from speaking um, publicly about, a, do about a, a topic that goes contrary to what a position the board adopted, I think that would be a violation of the First Amendment and the Vermont Constitution's protection on free speech. So I couldn't, you know, support uh, this, this statement that says, refrain from engaging in activities that harm the district's ability to pursue its mission, if that includes, you know, prohibiting speech. Because I think it's, again, I think that's beyond the board's power. Uh, so those are my concerns. 
Okay, thank you, Chris. So it, you know, it's, it's really up to each board member. I would encourage you to accept the code of ethics. I think that what I would say to what you just said, uh, Chris, is that it's, it's really, it's just about the motions that we take. So it's, it's just part of that democracy or what they do uh, in other places. We, as a board, we would make a decision where we might not all agree, but as a board, we would stand behind that decision as a board. So we don't go behind and, and pose, for example, on Front Porch Forum uh, that you are against that. I, I don't know. You, so we don't harm the decisions that we're trying to do as, as a group. Sometimes we won't agree, but we still support the work of the group, right? And so, so that's what that is, uh, uh, what that means there. So, the, well, again, I think that those, that type of prohibition um, in attempting to uh, compel compliance with that is, it just violates the First Amendment and free expression. I mean, the board can vote and, and takes votes and has positions, um, but then to say that a member cannot speak against that, the position that the board has taken, I think that's just a plain violation. I mean, we see examples of that in our legislature all the time where, uh, you know, bills will pass and members can still freely speak and say, I didn't agree with it and this is why. And, you know, I, I think this is, um, it, it's somewhat censorious. So um, that's why I will not support it. But I understand your position too, that, you know, you, the board makes a decision and the, and the board speaks, the majority speaks for the board in whatever position that is. Thank so, you, Chris. Jonathan? Thank you. I would agree with Chris, and, and uh, certainly we, we should all be uh, acting ethically. There's no question. And of course, that's always a, to some extent a philosophical and a vague term, what is ethics generally? But I think we uh, all have a, a pretty good um, feel and understanding for what ethical behavior is. Uh, with respect to serving on a board, um, but I wouldn't be comfortable signing it either. So, thanks. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments? Yeah, I think that this is vague enough that I, I, I'm not concerned about a chilling effect on speech, you know, based on this, you know, um, you know, avoid making comments that may compromise the decision-making ability of the board or administrators. I don't think that encompasses, you know, disagreements, policy, personnel, anything, you know, I, the first amendment is still what it is. Uh, you can say really whatever you want. These are norms, right? Not rules. Um, that's my, my two cents. Thank you, Jonas. Chris. So I would respond to that, that the vagueness is the problem. Uh, in that, you know, the board can say, well, or a member of the board can call someone else out by saying, you made this statement and it harmed the board, uh, harmed the board's ability to, to pursue its mission. And so the vagueness becomes the problem. Uh, and, you know, it, it just, it, it can, it can be a chilling effect. So that's that, you know, and we have a, a fair disagreement there, Jonas, but that's my concern. Thanks. Diane? Yeah, I guess to me, I'm going through it as well and looking at it and just, it, it's about, it, I mean, there are codes of ethics that we do use, but it, it's when you, re, well, require isn't the right word. When there's an expectation of a signature, then my immediate thought is, well, what what is the purpose of that signature and what's the the consequence or the accountability, because that's what I hear Chris mentioning is it's the, when there suddenly becomes a consequence or um, um, an, a, somebody applying what one of these statements is in a way that's potentially punitive or limiting. And so I guess that's where my question just comes into it. Um, that again, if we have these norms and these expectations, it's it's the signature part, and I guess I just don't know who's asking for the signature and where the signature is expected because I haven't done one of these before. 
Yeah, Diane, I'll just respond to that one quickly. So we we haven't done done it in the past because there was no there was there, there was no agreement uh, as a board. The the signature is 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 really uh, it, it, it there there's no nobody coming uh, after after you. The the signature is just how we hold each other accountable. It, you don't need to sign it. We could just accept it as a as a whole board. But it, in the past, because we haven't been able to accept it as a whole board, it, you know, signing it was another was another option, but it's really, we are all elected board members. So there's, we can't like unelect you, right? <laughs> so so we can hold, and, and we do that. I, I think that we have demonstrated through this past year, how we hold each other accountable and what we hold each other accountable is like how we hold each other up. So these are just basic uh, ethical guidelines uh, from for 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 the board. So it's it's not it's not meant to be punitive. Um, Ursula and then Daniel. I wanted to ask Chris a clarifying question, just so that I'm understanding. When you're talking about the not being able to speak out or how this is that the part underneath the within my scope of fiduciary fiduciary. I'm going to pronounce it wrong role the refrain from engaging in activities that harm the district's ability to pursue its mission yes is that yes. the one that you're thinking would act it is i mean i mean that's know, specifically are... about financial Did look it's about our role. financial no, it, role no, uh you know what it's it's talking about a fiduciary role, role which is not necessarily financial it's a trust you have a public trust and we do have a fiduciary duty um and you know the fiduciary aspect of our our, our positions goes throughout this document. I mean, it, it, you know, it's more specific in terms of, you know, not receiving anything of value for a vote, things like that. But that also is um, a violation of your fiduciary duty of trust to the public. So fiduciary is just not money. It's, okay. it's uh, an issue of trust. Uh, and like fiduciaries are, you know, assigned to take care of um, others and make decisions for others. Um, and they do it with the utmost regard for that other person not their own interests. So that the word fiduciary just doesn't mean money. It's, it's a broader concept than that. Thank you. Thank, thanks for the question. Daniel? I'm really glad we're having the discussion regardless of what our decision is. I guess I'm inclined to sign it uh, because I think I like the act of, I mean, I, there is vagary that I maybe prefer wouldn't be there, but I like the act of very intentionally sort of, um, you know, stating our, our intent to act in this fiduciary role and in this ethical role. And I think it's sort of, it, it demands, it demands us to sort of look back at this and bring our judgment to bear on something in a way that not signing it and, and then just sort of making a choice in a moment and in a case without you know, without considering that would. Um, I, I, I appreciate the argument that maybe it's, maybe it has a chilling effect. Maybe there is some overly vague language, but um, yeah, I appreciate it. I think I'm gonna sign it if, if that's, if it's our choice to adopt. Thank you, Daniel. Hey, Maggie and then Dennis. Does adoption require signature? They, I, I think there was a question that asked earlier about why this is being asked of us um, in particular, and it maybe hasn't been fully answered yet. Why this act of signature is being, you know, requested. And I, I think that Daniel just explained it better than I explained it before. Is just it, it it's it, it's really just how we hold each other accountable. So we are being asked to sign, and but then we can look back, and 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 really think about our our decisions. But it's just to hold each other accountable. But there's no punitive thing. It's just like, do we believe in this ethical, Dennis? I think with all due respect to every position and the conversation, I think that you know, we're sort of just chasing our tails here and that in fact, the, the ethics and the language therein is a guideline that we can all follow and we can all be 
aware and cognizant of it, but I don't think that a signature is going to change how people particularly respond. So I think that everyone, you know, I always assume good intentions. I know that people are, are so they wouldn't be doing this work if they weren't well intended. And I do think that, um, you know, Chris does have a point about sort of the, a, a sense of sense censorship that um, is important to be aware of, but, but certainly not within the board's control. And so I think that the ethical um, concepts are important and appropriate, but to have them as guidelines, but not as a, a signature, a signatory document um, just doesn't make any sense to me. Because there, there's nothing that other than working together and sort of like all of us working together, there's no punitive response. There's no consequence for not following them. There's, they, they really don't hold any um, weight other than we all are here for a, a purpose of supporting kids and communities and um, and I'm tired and I'm talking like <laughs> circles, but so I just think that that it's important to have them, but I think signing them sort of pushes us to a place that we don't need to be because we're, we're already there because we're doing what we're doing. So again. Okay, and I, I don't wanna spend all night in this either. So Kari. Thanks, maybe I can have the last word. I, I totally agree with Dennis. I think signing it is a symbolic act of the, basically we were attesting so these, these are the standards that I'm going to commit to in working with you. Um, and I think the thing I really want to say is that I actually wish these went further in, in, in what, you know, the one voice principle, meaning that, that we have no individual authority. We only have authority as a group. And whatever decisions this group makes, I intend to abide by those decision. I'm not going to do anything to undermine. Even if I think it's absolutely the wrong decision, it's going to be my decision too. And that's the commitment I would like all of us to have um, for each other, and regardless of penalty. Thank you, Kari. Well said. So I, I, I think with that, we could close that this, <laughs> this conversation. Uh, I, I, I think we all had, had a chance. Uh, I didn't hear from Natasha. But I think everybody had a chance to express uh, how, how they feel. And I think we are going to hold each other accountable and we act as one. So I'm going to move into, if that's okay with everybody, I'm going to move into adapting. I'm actually going to jump from um, communications uh, all the way down to uh, the designate the newspaper of record. Could I have a motion? I move to designate the Times Argus as our newspaper of record. Thank you, Jonas, a second? Second. Thank you, Ursula. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you, the motion carries. Uh, the, the next one, we, we do not need to appoint. I hope that you had a chance to read the memo. We do not need to appoint because it went to arbitration and we don't need to appoint anybody for, for this year for, for ratify, the ratification of negotiations. So, but we do need to uh, appoint a board representative to the Central Vermont uh, Career Center. And I've been that person in the past and I would like to continue serving that just because we are going to be moving <laughs> the work that we've been doing. So I can't quite detach quite yet of that of that work. Um, so I move that we appoint Floor D. Smith as our representative to the Center for My Career Center. Second. Thank you, Chris. And Dennis. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Right. Okay. And then uh, I'll just go quickly in, in board development. When we go into our retreat, we can talk a little bit more about board development. Right now, I wanted to welcome again our new board members and try to create a partnership. We have tried to do this before, but I would like to make it more intentional this time. Everybody was going to be uh, receiving uh, a copy, old and new board members. We, it's usually just the packet goes to the new board members, but we're just going to get some extra uh, the essential work of Vermont school boards so that everybody has the newest, uh, the, the newest uh, edition 
of that. And then I would like to pair maybe by town if possible to see if uh, Jonas could adopt Natasha as your <laughs> uh, mentoring so that you have somebody to, you know, ask questions to somebody that it, if that's okay with you, Jonas, I say, or, you know, I, or I, know, I mean, I think that that relationship should go the other way, but I'd yeah. be happy to. <laughs> well, so you guys could uh, create a, a partnership and the same for, you know, uh, Dennis, uh, I don't know if Chris or Ursula are willing to partner with uh, sure. Dennis and it could be across towns too. It doesn't sure. have to be. Uh, That'd be great. I'll, I'll utilize both of my Middlesex colleagues. Okay. We, we can yeah, I'd also say, yeah, I'd also say, Mikaelin, please join the coffee clutch. Yeah, make it, it's true. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Jen? And Callis, are we set for Daniel in terms of a yeah. mentorship as well? But yeah, well, one second. Yeah, very. Yes, sorry, Daniel. <laughs> yeah. So no, the no. same for the, the same for Cal as you have a Kari and Maggie to Yeah, I'm I'm certainly not shy. I've I've definitely um um tapped Maggie in terms of uh, a resource and, and I'm not shy about reaching out to Kari either and um really really grateful for having some se senior perspectives on the, um, on our delegation. <laughs> Thank you. And, and, you know, as, and for you to know, I'm available. I've been trying to communicate with all of you new board members too. And I'm, I'm always available. If you have a question, just feel free to email or, or text me and I'll make sure that you get the information that you need. I added some a toolkit a, and essential work a, a hyperlinks in that hopefully those, those, those work, there is a first year journey. You are gonna be receiving a welcoming packet from the Vermont School Board Associations too, but there are lots of resources in there to, uh, to help you know, with your first year uh, journey. Uh, now let's move with, we're gonna get back to our agenda. In the biggest, you know, save the best for last, we have to have the conversation about in-person and remote. Uh, meetings. Uh, I'm hoping that it won't take too long since I told you 8.30 and it's 8.46 and Lindy, everybody's falling asleep and hungry. So uh, a lot of boards- I mean, have, I ate during the meeting. <laughs> okay. A lot of boards have moved into in-person meetings already. As you have heard, the guidelines have, have changed. Uh, I think we need to have a conversation and I know that we're still waiting for kids to, you know, the younger kids to be vaccinated too. Uh, it would be nice to get together again and also preserve some flexibility of uh, of remote uh, meetings. Uh, I personally for the board are still a little worried about hybrid meetings. So I think either we do, you know, a, a proposal was that we could consider continue to have our first meeting of the mode, the community engagement meeting remote and the third meeting of the month in person to, to start. Uh, but the conversation is open to all of you. And I think instead of just uh, letting one person uh, talk, I'm gonna just call so that everybody has a chance to, to say, and I'll start with you, Maggie. I'm uh, entirely flexible with whatever the will of the board is. Um, in, when it comes to the community engagement forums, I wonder about that being an in-person with the option of participating by Zoom because that feels more potentially inclusive to people who may not have internet access or may not be feel, feel comfortable with the technology. So I would propose the opposite. Thank you, Maggie. Jonathan. Yeah, I'm, I'm really pretty flexible about it too. Thank you, Natasha. I'm just going by my screen. <laughs> Sorry. Where are the where are the in person meetings held? I use thirty two, uh, but in the past we also had moved them around and to different schools. So, uh, but uh, let's say U thirty two for the purpose of this meeting. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, I'm flexible. I'm still hesitant to do 
group meetings inside. I know everything is changing with regulations, but I mean, if it's a big enough space where we can still do all the mitigation stuff, I would be open to it. Thank you, Natasha. Lindy? Um, I, I think the public is kind of demanding it, even though they don't come to our meetings. But um, I, being a person who's not able to work remote and be in schools with the kids, I hear why don't other people have to go to work and be with people. And I think we need to, if we're going to move in that direction, we should set that bar. I am fine with one meeting being remote and one being in person. I think the convenience of remote has been amazing. And we have had more people come to meetings than we do when we're in person. I think um, what Maggie said about the public being the one that's in person had some merit to it. I hadn't really thought about it, but in you know my years at East Montpelier on the board and then on this board, it was rare unless we were cutting a position <laughs> or something like that, that anyone came to the meetings. So um, I, but I do feel we have to have at least one a month in person and walk the walk if that's the way the movement is for um, the world. Thank you, Lindy. Uh, John, Jonas? Um, if we're going to have, I, so I, I would prefer to stay remote. It is convenient. This is hard enough as it is, and it's a time, you know, it consumes enough time. Having these remote, you know, saves me a half an hour of driving on the way there and a half an hour of driving on the way back. The last two meetings I attended in person during the winter of 2020, I suffered a flat tire and a blown radiator late at night at U32. That was not fun. I am glad that that's not happening now. Um, in terms of walking the walk, I think we need to make the decision that that works for us. I do think that... Um, I do think that with, you know, masks coming off and, and, and things, it is safer to, uh, to be in person. Um, I also just think that it, we've been extremely effective the last two years. I, I have grown accustomed. I mean, I'm not, my experience is not normative. I live my entire life on Skype and Zoom and Slack and Google Meets and Microsoft Teams. Um, um, I find the remote meeting really effective and efficient. Um, um, so I would prefer to stay remote just because I think it allows more people to come to meetings, both board members and not board members. Um, but if we're going to go to, you know, if we're going to do it, then I think Maggie has the right idea. Let's do the community forum in person. We want to meet the public, talk to the public. Let's do those in person. And I would really, really prefer uh, to keep these long marathon school board meetings remote. No, then nobody has to drive home. I, I just Thank want to interject you. that I was proposing that there's still a remote option by you know Zoom yeah. Yeah. for those. Yes. Uh, Daniel. Yeah, I think I'm ambivalent for all the reasons mentioned, so I'm just going to uh, defer to others. Hey, Chris McVeigh. Um, I would prefer to get back in person with meetings, but I'd also prefer uh, and hope that we have maintain a remote option for um, the public to participate because it has been a, an astounding increase in public partic participation to the extent that their uh, public is, is seeing our meetings and have that always be a, 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 an option for the public to attend, uh, but that, that we do a hybrid and, and at least start having our, our business meetings in public in in person thank you thank you uh, ursula i have a comfort level issue with meeting in person i think and it's just a personal um struggle with getting back out to those public meetings and being around people still right now i could see doing the hybrid and I like Maggie and what Jonah said, where we do the community forum in person. It's the shorter meeting, the convenience of our Zoom meetings for these long ones is nice. 
Thank you, Ursula. Uh, Michaela? Um, I think that I would vote for meeting in person. Um, I think it'd be great if we could have um, the option, at least for the public, to zoom in as well. Um, but I, I think especially now that, you know, kids have been in school in person, teachers have been in school in person, I'm someone who has a job that's in person, I agree that, you know, keeping the board remote for our safety is, seems a little um, hypocritical in a sense. <laughs> Plus, I'd really like to meet you all in person. <laughs> Um, so, but I do, I, I think it would be great, um, again, just for, to reach as many community members as possible to have the, um, hybrid option. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Diane? Yeah, it, I, I like the idea of the community forum and, and also part of what we had had as part of our schedule was traveling to the different schools. And so it would be nice to do the public forums in each of the different schools and really have it be uh, an opportunity for us all to become that community. So instead of each divided, not divided, but the different schools come together. So I could see that really working as um, the in-person one. And then again, yes, it is nice that, um, you know, we're tired, but once we sign off, we're done as opposed to being tired and then signing off and um, driving. And you know, I have a long commute to work. And so adding on that on the end of the day also uh, is is a little bit challenging to think of not being home at the end of that. Thank you, Diane. Uh, Dennis? Thank you. Um, I am really not interested in meeting in person with all due respect. I think that, um, well, with all due respect, I mean, COVID is still raging. The numbers are are artificially lowered by the way that the state has re redone their testing. You know, I appreciate that kids are back in school, um, but I don't think that, that with all due respect, I'm not trying to be disrespectful to anybody, that walking the walk means that I have to put myself at personal risk of death. Um, and I'm, I know I'm being dramatic, but to, to you know, support other people's needs. And I, I've been very COVID cautious my circle is tight. I work in a in a school as well, so I'm also involved. But I think that in, you know, suddenly engaging myself with a bunch of people, not even this group, but the public forum, for instance, with people that I don't know what their vaccination status is, I don't know what their cautious level caution level is, makes me really uncomfortable. So I would weigh heavily on the side of staying remote until such time as um, there's a much higher level of of safety for everyone involved. I know that sounded a little dramatic, but again, I'm tired and cranky, so that's what I think. We'll try to get you out of this meeting as soon as possible, then, so we don't lose you in the first meeting. Uh, Kari? Yeah, I think we're going to have to figure out the hybrid thing sooner or later. There's just too many issues. There's the safety issues. There's people's time. There, it, ultimately, it's an equity issue. And I, it's, we're going to, it's eventually all groups are expected to do it, I think. So we might as well figure it out sooner than later. Personally, I'm not so concerned about safety. I will miss being able to sign off and not drive home, but I'm I'm flexible. Whatever we do, I suggest that we plan in a three or six month review and just discuss how's it going and then plan to adjust from there if we want to. Chris McVeigh, you're muted. Have you gone through everybody, Floor? I believe. Have you already so. gone through everybody? I believe so. I think I've okay, gone through everybody. I, suggest, yeah. I mean, there's some or, strong. Oh. Who? I didn't weigh in. Oh, Vera. Okay. I'm sorry. I just I was not seeing you and your phone. Sorry, Vera. Go ahead. Um, I would prefer to do the hybrid model, um, and I agree with Kari 100. Whatever. However, we merge into this, um, doing a check-in in three or six months and having a timeline set for eventually going into in-person for all of our meetings. Thank you, Vera. Sorry about that. Hey, Chris? 
You know, d- does the hybrid model uh, include um, that some board members could be in person and some could still be in Zoom? Um, because yeah. I think that would be the way to go. Um, because it's going to, you know, address folks who have concerns about, um, you know, being exposed, uh, and and also allows those who want to show, go go in person to be in person, and we still get our business done. So, I think the hybrid would be the way to go. Myself, um, you know, and, and just let everyone, you know, decide how they what what best fits their experience. Okay. I didn't realize the hybrid was, that's what the definition of the hybrid was that we we're talking about, that some could be remote and some could be in person. Yeah, so I, I guess for the for the hybrid, we'll uh, invest a little in technology. We have talked about looking into the OWL and, and seeing if we can uh, figure out the best way because it has to work, right? right? So that uh, we make sure that people that are remote are fully participating because there's nothing worse than when you have a hybrid meeting and you can't have everybody participate. Daniel, do you have a... I was just gonna, um, I really liked Diane's suggestion of uh, incorporating the community forums at different schools. With the hybrid model, I could see, especially with uh, sort of better technology, the the challenge of moving that around to schools, I can just sort of, channel my inner IT manager and sort of wonder about the logistics of that and how that's going to work. Um, so I just want to raise that as an issue. And if that poses a problem, I don't know, I, I'd like to resolve that problem because I really would like to see the schools and meet those communities. Yeah, I, th- I think one one thing that we could do by listening to to everybody is allow the community engagement meeting to happen in person at each individual individual school use the technology that is available but not uh, at least encourage most board members to be able to to come to the community engagement meetings and then uh, for now uh, continue to do the the third wednesday of the month uh, remote and revisit this again in April. I think we can. So the third week in April, revisit it uh, again, and maybe we end up with at least a couple of meetings uh, in person before we break in the month of July, and then we would have a, a better idea of, of how how things are going. Uh, Ursula and then Diane and then Lindy. I wanted to ask, maybe Kari has input on this. If we go to being in person for that first Wednesday of the month, how will that affect the education quality meeting that is typically the hour beforehand? We will meet in person. (laughs) We'll have to be there in person, I I would think, or hybrid. Yeah. Okay. Lindy? Well, I think uh, addressing it again, and perhaps since Jen is still here, oh, I, I guess um, Mark is still here too, the equipment needs, because I know when um, my husband had to set up the town office for hybrid meetings, the equipment that they purchased so that you're projecting as well as you have the right microphones, um, it, it wasn't a huge deal, but it has to be set up and it has to be somebody's has to be watching for hands to go up on the remote people, but it could be done. And yeah, I yeah, think yeah. it would be more equitable and inclusive. Yeah, and uh, Jen, you, you can speak to that, but they'll take care of that, yeah. Yeah, I was thinking about that. I was remembering back in the day, Orca's here tonight. I remember how early they would come to set up wherever we were, right, to put microphones. I mean, there's a um, certainly a, a lift technologically to figure out. And I think logistically, I think the most important thing, having participated in meetings that have a remote component when they're in person is exactly that. If we really want to be inclusive and thoughtful, we need to pay attention to making sure that folks can fully access the meetings. And that there's a sort of specialty in terms of approaching them in that way. Um, in order to feel like they're really worthwhile. We'd have to figure it out. I love the idea of always uh, 
as you would do right now, figuring out the feedback at the end, and then how do we get better? How do we get better um, so that we can continue to to meet the community's needs and meet your needs? Okay. So I, I think what I'm hearing is that it, Jonas. Yeah, I just remote meetings aren't going away. Yeah. I think that we need to adapt to to this. It is it's convenient. It's cheap. It's safe. Yeah. So uh, I, I think at least for now we're going to agree that our March uh, meeting would be remote, and we would plan on doing our best to have that first meeting on in April to be a community engagement in in person if possible. But we'll update you as uh, as as we go. Does that sound like a like a plan? Okay, uh, now let's move into approving the minutes of 216 before I lose all of you. I move to approve the minutes of uh, February 16th. Thank you, Jonas. Can I have a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Lindy. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Hi. 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 Okay. Oh, Michaela got logged out and she doesn't seem to be able to get back in. Okay. Hmm. All right. Uh, personnel approve new teachers. And we have a couple. Lindy, with resignation. Um, yeah, I only see one resignation. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Mike. Oh, I'm supposed to just make the motion, then I can discuss it. <laughs> um, I make a motion to accept the resignation of Hank Van Orm and the U32 athletic director. A second. second. Okay, hey, discussion. Um, my question is, is that now or at the end of the year? That would be effective uh, now. I believe that the letter says March 14th, but don't completely quote me on that. Because there's nothing attached. Usually we have a something yeah, attached that tells us. Well, yeah, I think it's March 14th, Lindy, but I, right, soon though. Yeah. Any other questions? I assume I'm not allowed to ask why. I mean, since the letter's not there, I... I, I think it's okay for me to share um, that Hank is uh, getting uh, seeking employment in the private sector. And the other thing that I would say just overall is that um, I'm just so grateful for his service to this uh, district for as long as he has served our district and especially navigating uh, the world of athletics <laughs> during COVID has been incredibly challenging. And um, our students and our teams who have participated and enjoyed a tremendous amount of camaraderie and, um, and support and safety. And I just think that we should hold Hank up um, and thank him for his service. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jen. That was why I asked, because it can feel like there's something wrong here if we don't have information. So mm -hmm. I'm glad that you said that because I didn't want to accept it wondering, was there something that happened? But Thank you. Jonas and then Ursula. Yeah. I don't recall. I don't think we usually get letters of rec of resignation. We've seen we've seen some other recent resignations where there was no documentation either. But there's usually that paper that says effective now and sometimes there's a reason. And there was nothing. I think that's the hiring paper. The hiring paper, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it has the new person and it says who they're replacing and the reason why that person's leaving. So, so I, think I think it's, it's that why that person's leaving fills yeah. us yeah. in. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But but yeah, I, I would agree with what Jen and others have said that we owe a lot to Hank and he had been involved in other efforts in our schools too and really had put a lot of himself so we he's going to be missed by by everybody so with that all those in favor of accepting his resignation please say aye aye, aye. 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 any opposed aye. 
You opposed? No, I, I was late. Okay. It was late. I <laughs> unmuted. Sorry, I shouldn't have okay. asked that question yeah. like that. I'm like, are you opposed? But, yeah, sorry. But yeah. uh, you know, I I do. Uh, thank you, Jen, for the uh, uh, the kind words about Hank. I, I I you know, it sounds like he made a tremendous difference in a, a very difficult time, and wish him the very best in his um, private sector career. And then, it, Jen, it, could you update us in vacancies just quickly? Sure. So um, you just accepted Hank's resignation. So we're seeking uh, an athletic director. Um, I reviewed at the last meeting, for those who uh, were there, vacancies. Nothing has changed right now. So um, we still have some paraeducator vacancies, some BI positions. Um, that driver's ed position, we had never found anybody. We're going to play out this year, and then we're starting to advertise for positions that we know are open. And now that um, our towns have approved the budget, we're going to, we have a bunch of meetings tomorrow to review our list of positions and start getting them posted for next year. So um, we're just going to do our best to sort of close out right now um, for the year and then look ahead. And uh, we anticipate, like many people in the state, that um, there's going to be a, um, a rush on wanting to hire folks. And, um, and we want to make sure that our ducks are in a row so we can be uh, timely and get really fabulous folks on board. Thank you, Jen. Uh, with that, I'm going to move into board reflections. The time. And for new for new board members, uh, we we take this time to reflect on the meeting and things that went well or things that you would like to improve or just any reflection that 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 you have. You don't have to have one either, but if there's anything that do you want to say, Dennis? Yeah, I just want to apologize for my crankiness there towards the end of the meeting. <laughs> so I'm usually much friendlier. So no, no need. It, Thank you, everybody. Okay. Thank you for being here. Um, anybody else? Chris? Yeah. Um, I, I, again, I, I want to comment on our, our discussion that we had. Uh, with the, you know, We had opposing viewpoints, but we're able to discuss them and explain them and uh, do it candidly, civilly, politely, and with great courtesy and kindness to each other. So uh, it is a board norm that is a wonderful one here, and uh, I applaud everyone for our honoring it. And uh, I look forward to this year. Thanks. Thank you, Chris. Diane? I just, I appreciated your laying out all of the different things that we needed to consider during our orientation or, you know, the renewing or of our board roles and that. So thank you, Floor. That was helpful to have it all written out and laid out like that. Thank you, Diane. Ursula? I wanted to welcome our new members again. And just as a also fairly new board member, just go and lurk at all of the policy meetings that you can. I, that's what I've been doing. I come, I don't always say anything, but it helps you sometimes just get that in-depth view and everybody's very welcoming and they'll ask questions, they'll answer questions when you have them. Thank you, Ursula. So with that, I, I don't see any members of the public except Mr. David Lawrence. So if, but I don't see any hands up. David, do you have something that you would like to share? Like, hmm. Okay, I don't wanna put him in the spot either, but maybe he's not there. So with that, I would be looking, oh, Chris. I have um, one floor and I wanna um, thank you for recognizing the turmoil that, um, the nation of Ukraine is going through at this point, and that um, I want to applaud them, the the country and its citizens for their uh, courage in the face of harrowing circumstances um, caused by the Russian government, not the Russian people, the Russian government. Uh, and I also want to recognize and applaud the uh, collective response that uh, many countries in the world have taken uh, to um, you know, unite against this uh, illegal aggression and uh, just, you know, hope that things will turn out well for the Ukrainians and for our world. Because I think this, this collective response to a very brutal and illegal 
aggression um, has been wonderful. You know, despite you know, a horrible situation, but a very wonderful response. And I, and I want to just, you know, we should be talking about this because it, it is in our schools, in our world. It's a, um, potentially a world all, uh, altering event. Thanks. Thank you, Chris. So, everybody ready to go to sleep or have dinner? Oh, Lindy, <laughs> sorry. Because of Chris awesome? bringing that up, I had to keep us for one more moment. Um, my niece and her family live in Ukraine. They live in Kyrgyzstan. And my brother Skyped with them and posted. And the children wanted to tell a funny story. Kind of not really that funny, but a Russian tank. The Russians got out of it because they weren't sure if it ran out of gas, but they were running out of gas a lot. And the Ukrainians have been told to provide gas, but make sure you put sugar in your gas cans. And um, this farmer hooked his tractor up to the tank <laughs> and the farmers stole the tank. They just started pulling the tank away and the Russians were running behind to catch their tank. And my niece's children were just thinking this was the most hilarious thing and that a brewery is instead of making beer, making Molotov cocktails. Um, and they're in a shelter right now. Well, they're in a root cellar. Um, and, but they wanted to make sure they told their grandpa, who is my father, my brother, um, the story of the tank being stolen by the farmers. So the Ukrainians are doing some amazing things. Lindy, I, I have seen that the Ukrainian tax authorities have announced that you do not need to declare any tanks or armored vehicles that you acquire from the invading <laughs> Russians. What an in that's an incentive. Mm -hmm. well, good evening, everybody. If we can have Thank a you. motion to adjourn. I think Kerry just said he moves in. Second. 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 <laughs> Bye. Bye, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Jen. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah.